Sup? <sighs> Holy shit. <coughs> Dave Dieter rules. Okay, I can't lie. We had some audio shoe. <laughs> I can't say that word. Audio issues. We had some technical difficulties. <laughs> Every technical difficulty. We bought no gear uh, and it all blew up. The cameras, the audio. Yeah, if it wasn't for Nathan McMillan, this wouldn't even <sighs> be out. So we're so grateful for you. But alas, if a guest is amazing, it's Dave Dieter. We're safe. We're saved. You're safe, children. God bless you. Eleven. Six. Shit's yeah, I grew up in Maple Valley. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the, the little town of Maple Valley, such as it is a town, when there was one traffic light. Exactly. Where it, that was in, it. Where, it, where it's tangential to Highway 8. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. On a seven-mile-long dead-end road. Really? Yeah. Wow. That whole area. So I grew up in northeast Seattle, uh, kind of where Duffalo, half a block from where Duffalo is now. And... Uh, but I went to, my dad helped start Crystal Mountain, so I drove through Whoa. Maple Valley every, like, you know, 30 times a winter oh, wow. uh, from age 2 to 18. Your and dad? it was a lot different then. I can, yeah. It's one traffic light. Yeah. 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 Your dad helped start Crystal Mountain? Yeah, it was, it was actually Stone's dad, my dad, and, you know, like 30 other guys who all just, like, let's start a ski area. And they all went in, were part, sort of original partners, and there was some bigger partner who... Running more of the money, but yeah, it was a bunch of guys who wow. were, you know, all like in their late twenties or early thirties, and they were all they all skied at Stevens. At that Stevens was the place at the time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> super high speed, crazy rope toes that they all rode, and then <laughs> Crystal was the new thing. I have yeah. no idea. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I just always thought that was there for who well, was there. No, Crystal started in sixty two, I think. Oh wow! It's and you said Stone's dad. Stone Stone's Gosser? dad, yeah. Stone's dad. I'm, Who? I'm actually Who's named Stone Gosser. Uh, Stone's like dad. And, Stone's dad and my dad dude. were super, super good friends. I'm named That's so named cool. after Stone's dad. Actually. You are. Yeah. Really? Oh. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, Dave Gossard. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's how that would work, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. They were. Now, did, did you and Stone go to CCD together? No, I went and went CCD on my own. <laughs> and I were like talking about CCD. Like, we drove, we went to Chinese, and then we drove back by the villa, and I was like, oh, fuck, I used to have to walk from Laurelhurst Elementary up to the villa. It was terrifying. Like, <laughs> What's the know, villa? The Villa Academy, now it's fed. The Catholic Church is up on the hill in oh, Laurelhurst, oh, oh. which um, was where, which was terrifying as a like, third grader to walk up the hill and then in the twilight on a winter <laughs> Monday evening to go to CCD. Yeah. No, I had a whole... I somehow survived. I don't like the that one's not working. Somehow survived. Oh, that's not... Yeah, right. um... Yeah, Stone... You know, Stone and I don't hang out together and never really have, but we're, you know... Uh, we're, it's weird, like, extended family. Yeah. You know, we're not, like, bro down, but... Yeah. If we see each other, it's like seeing your cousin or something. Yeah. Crazy. It's weird. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. So he grew up in the, the same He road. grew up in Capitol Hill. And actually, he lived right across the street from, uh, what's his name? The Eulers. Um, Paul Eulers. Paul ended up being. The Jeweler Paul Eulers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they lived across the street from each other. <clears throat> Stuff my CPU's full of. I, just, I don't know why I know that shit. It's the dumbest stuff ever. Uh, and it, was Paul your age? No, Paul's. Uh, you know, the, all those. The I went to the same school as all those guys, but they're all like five or six years younger than me. They might have been in seventh and eighth grade when I was a senior in high school. Were you, were you 81? I was 82. 82, right. Yeah, and I think... Oh, like, no, they're like 84. E, or e, no, even younger, actually. So, like, Rich and... I think those guys... My sister was a freshman when I was a senior, and I think, like, uh, Rich and uh, Cole and those guys were all 86 or 87. Just for the record, we did not name our son after Cole. Cole's a really nice guy. I love Cole. I love Cole. <laughs> and his dad, whether you know it or not, was a really well-known uh, photographer. Really? Yeah. He he was a I think photography. A yeah, and he did. 
You'd have to ask Cole about it. There's one super famous. I want to say it's of Jordan. There's one shot that he did that's been licensed like a billion times. I think. Oh, it's yeah. his. I think so. Yeah, I, I can't remember the whole story. Cole told now, did it to me Cole ten years. Go to CCD. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. With a cow. See, see how soon I'm doing that? Kind of yeah, bring, it it, bring it back so to the cow. Did you, did you grow up going to church? I grew up, my mom grew up in like North Seattle Parish. You know, she was part of a big parish. Oh, wow. Do you know which, which family? one? Uh, why am I blanking it? She, was, she lived on Northeast 80th, so it would have been whatever that. There's the Catholic parish right there, and I'm blanking on what it is. It's easy to do. It's St. Patrick's or St. Joe's. Or yeah, Saint, it's one of those. Not St. Joe's. Or, yeah, yeah. O'Shaughnessy's. <laughs> Yeah. FX McCrory's. Yeah, the Macarusos, uh, whatever. So was. I grew up, yeah, and then my parents split up when I was seven or eight, and that kind of, that was sort of was the it? end of it. But I went to CCD until, I remember that was like one of those first, like, uh, taking agency in your life, I think, in like fourth or fifth grade. I was like, I don't really see the point of doing this until oh, I stopped going to CCD. But I had my first first communion with Eddie Hewlett's. How's that? Right. And, and so and so, you got to figure. Uh, you know, was the water sort of like s- simmering? Was there like was there steam? Was there, with Ed, was there, like, no comment. I'd you like got to stand about. I'd like to stand about four people back. <laughs> doing, doing that hit the tongue, you're gonna like, have to have you have to have Ed on your show <laughs> to get the stories. Uh, if you want to go there, you yeah, that's pretty was, young to be like. I, yeah, I guess I had. I don't know. You know, I don't know why I felt that at the time. I was not. Into, I mean, what fourth or fifth grade? Somewhere in there, end of grade school. It's like I don't see the point of doing this. I'm not well, not into it. Oh shit! Oh. And, and at CCD, it's like it's not like uh, we've talked about this. They can't really throw you out. Well, no, they kids. I remember it was one day a week after school, and I don't remember if it was year round. But so I would walk from Lowellhurst Elementary up the big. It, uh, plus, I just didn't like. I had to walk away from home, right. a half mile up the biggest hill in the neighborhood, and then it would in the <laughs> twilight. You know, it was after, and then it would be dark. Right then, I'd be a little be like little eight year old me walking home in the dark in the rain at a mile and a half or two miles or whatever it was yeah. after C didn't I didn't, wasn't really getting value out of that <laughs> that doesn't seem like a god that an eight year old wants to follow no. 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 no and I don't remember anything at all from the you know the the lessons I don't I remember the weird halls because at that time Villa Academy hadn't really gotten going so it was just sort of this weird 90% empty church building with some oh, scary well nuns in. No, no, because the Villa Academy then started up again and became a busy parochial school, but at that time it was not. So it was just this weird kind of extra building attached to the church that we went to, like big building, like, you know, four-story, enormous, neo... And em- empty. Empty, yeah, except for <laughs> random <laughs> scary nuns. Yeah, it was super, super creepy. And you had to walk up. Some family bought the... the if you drive around up there, I think the same family owns there are four or five houses on that property now, but it was all just empty and you had to walk up was through all those scary those monkey trees, you know, the evergreen oh, monkey yeah, yeah. ones. That's yeah, terrifying. Yeah, monkey tails. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh my this god. Is, this is yeah, this is Yeah, a- it was super creepy. It was very <laughs> gothic. It didn't turn me into a goth, but it was gothic. <laughs> did you, but so you did, like did your before your parents got divorced, your dad would go to church with your mom? We you? we all went to church and my mom's best friend who she'd grown up next to in North Seattle lived at that time like a block and a half from us in Laurelhurst. So that was kind of the, the thing. you'd get up and go and then go to one or somebody's house and eat eat donuts because you didn't need anything before communion <laughs> right. in the morning everybody was be hungry purpose? pardon was that a, yeah was yeah, that yeah a I think, I don't, yeah i think so i think you weren't supposed to <laughs> eat were, before before communion. you took the lord yeah before into you took the body, body of the body of christ <laughs> yeah. the body and blood of christ i think you're supposed to fast for that day before that which you know That's when churches at eight or nine in the morning but yeah I don't remember. I don't remember the fast. I don't know. Tell, maybe that was like maybe you know, that was a um, you know um, neighborhood by neighborhood. Tell neighborhood. three billion Muslims that that's you know Ramadan. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, and then, but so was it like a hard stop when your parents got divorced? Everybody stopped going to church. I don't remember. It was all you know. They didn't actually. They separated and didn't get divorced for like thirty five years. So that's a whole other story. Oh. But oh wow, yeah, that's interesting. Um, that was pretty really much stuff. the end of it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Yeah, it was yeah. The end of an era. It was fine with me. I didn't really like 
I wasn't didn't love it. Yeah. Did. There was sometimes some guitar strumming. You know, this would have been like early 70s, yeah. late 60s, early 70s. Do with it. Yeah, there was, you know, come on, people now. Smile on your brother, everybody yeah. get together. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. I remember, yeah, I remember that being <laughs> sung and played in the, in the chapel. Huh. It's not exactly pomp and And I remember, no. I remember, uh, I do remember the first communion. I think I had a clip on tie, and I seem to remember... Ed Helitz's mom bragging <laughs> that he had tied his tie himself. That's but those are my Fuck, religious you know, memories. That's not surprising because Ed was always. I mean, I don't, was he that fashionable even then? Uh, I don't remember. He was always cool. Yeah. I mean, he was. I mean, he was. He was even cooler than Doc. Oh shit! He <laughs> wouldn't even know. Right? I just he was a fucking, singer. I didn't even know. Well, him. he was just a dude. He was just was always like, "Hey, hey, Dieter." What's up? You know, he was that guy. Like, he, he just was like, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I remember sometime in high school because we didn't we didn't go to school together after grade school. Sometime in high school, I remember passing him in the middle of the neighborhood on a summer's day. I was walking home from the beach club, and he was probably walking back to his house. We were probably like fifteen or sixteen, and you know, I'm part of my crew in grades. We were like part of the, and yeah, I remember passing him on the street. I was like, you know, and you're like see each other coming for like four blocks, you know, <laughs> and and. Uh, and I was, we get to each other, I'm like, hey, Ed, and he's, he just looked at me and smirked, went, <laughs> That's all yeah, that was, that was it. I don't know, maybe he was baked out of his mind or something, I don't know, but it was, it was a great moment, he was just like, hey, was like, okay, uh, That's I'll never be that cool, ever, in yeah. a billion years. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, so after you stopped going to church, was there was that the end of uh, organized religion? Organized religion, yeah. Are you a spiritual guy? I guess so. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm, that's kind of why we play music, isn't it? I mean, totally. there are certainly there are things to, out there to feel and express that are beyond. I mean, I'm a super left brain, hyper rational person, but mm. I'm really more live for the right brain moments, which is why music is so great. Totally. Right? So it's all the same. You're look. It's the same feeling mm-hmm. that you're looking for of some c- feeling connected or tapping. In. Yeah, or the whole thing. I mean, I'm sure you. You know, playing music is not an ego. It's just like, and we're conduits, right? You yeah. ta- I, there, none of us is so amazing as a bag of water and salt and <laughs> shit, bones. shit. Yeah, shit and bones. <laughs> that we have something to our our power as musicians is to like tap into the cosmos, right? Or, and, totally. and translate, right? You know how totally. it is. When you're playing a show, it's a shared experience with every, whether it's fifty or five hundred or five thousand people. It's like you're all tapping into the same thing and we're our job is just to be it's almost like being a I mean this sounds egomaniacal but like being a priest or a shaman totally we talked to, we totally talked about yeah, how that's you know that that's the job yeah well and that's the i think that's the appeal like i was talking about wanting to be a uh um altar boy oh yeah yeah you know and not because i wanted to get fondled or anything but because <laughs> Well, because like you know, there's there's it's that a would group. just been a bonus. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, you know who's gonna judge? You know? <laughs> if uh, you know, like there's there's a room full of people and there's like three guys on stage and you're all doing it together. Oh, totally. Do this in memory of me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. ring the shit out of that bell. Oh yeah. That bell. Like, well, yeah. You get, to, you get to walk in with that giant staff and fucking you can. You know, like you're. And that is the weird thing about people who are good musicians is there's a weird, uh, paradoxical combination of wanting to, you know, not being shy about. You want not shy about being the center of attention, yeah. but at the same time, to do it right, it's very. Uh, you have to be very humble because mm-hmm. it's not about you ultimately. It's about like if you're playing with other people, mm-hmm. creating something bigger than the sum of the parts, and you know. And the sooner you recognize that, yeah, the better you are. Yeah. yeah. And that's the trick because that's, that's what that people don't to, get. As yeah. you know, when you play, as I play now in some dad bands, and some of them are with pro <laughs> musicians, and some of them with people who had bands in high school or whatever. And you know the the difference. The you know there's no pro drummer or bassist who ever would say this part's too boring. I don't. Know. It's like. You know, I read a great interview with uh, Narada Michael Walden, great drummer once, you know, one of the greatest session drummers of all time. And they're like, what's the hardest session you ever did? And he said it was Billie Jean, because it's just that, 
and it took <laughs> him time. like to get it exactly you know that's that's the humility right yeah because they're like you know he's you know you think about the totally. crap he's played on with jeff beck and stuff he's like oh my god the guy's like a fucking <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah he's like a monster and yeah. they're like no you know quincy jones and michael jackson he's like they're just hovering over me on his case they're like no that's not it too he's much just, and even just within that like yeah. not just too much but just like no, that's got it here. It's just a, this kick's a little too on top. The snare's a little, you know, I mean, yeah. that's the humility. <laughs> yeah. Like, or, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, being, being able to uh, hear what you're really doing without having your ego. Like, being able to recognize when you suck is super it's important. So hard. It's so hard to do, too. Well, that's, so, the, that's the balance, because on the one it's hand, the you deal. have to just be like, I'm here, I'm throwing down motherfuckers, any band that came on before me, I'm right. going <laughs> to choke you out. <laughs> right. You have to have that ego, but then at the same time, like if it sounds bad, you got to know when you sound like, yeah. okay, that's not in time, or that's not in tune. or that's It's just not, not happening. Yeah. yeah, or it's just not happening, or we're not locking in together. Or, totally. That's, that's the thing that always the, the has the people who can do that who who have that early mm -hmm. it just it just flabbergasts yeah I, I, have I, no, I got it like i got it like this morning that's what <laughs> yeah, i no, know it oh, took shit. me uh, i took me forever to really i mean i started to get an inkling in college i had was in one band this kind of funk band that the other guitar player was a phenomenal musician he was a guy from brooklyn who his name's matt Munisteri. he actually is a really busy guitarist in like trad jazz scene in new york um and uh, yeah he was the guy and we were playing James Brown songs, cameo, and um, he'd just be like, no, that fucking sucks. You're going to sit here and practice with me in my bedroom for two hours until you can play. <laughs> so it sucks yeah, I played, I played, we did one song. That was really one song where I learned, and there's no acoustic guitar in here, I'd play it. Um, Lick and Stick is a, um, is a James Brown song. And there, as with all James Brown songs, there are two interlocking guitar parts, right? And the part I played just went ding dong ding dong ding dong ding 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 for like eight minutes. And to learn to do that and have it lock in relentlessly and with swing for eight minutes, that was like uh that was when I started to Yeah to get a clue, mm -hmm. you know, and, f mm -hmm. yeah, but it took somebody, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it took somebody, Matt was really a brilliant musician. He was taking no quarter and he was just like, no, that fucking sucks. So yeah. we're going to figure it, you're going to learn to do it right. Yeah. It's impossible yeah. to, I did you know. guys do, did you do like stage band or jazz band? And yeah. I see, I didn't have that option. But it, but it didn't do any good because I also, because I also love Stuart Copeland and Neil Peart. Right. And so it was like, well, that, those, so I thought you were like, just supposed to play over and, and Keith Moon. Right. So it's like, you just well, disregard Keith everybody, Moon. do whatever the fuck you want and make it off time. And like, and yeah, hit, the, hit, hit the China as much as possible. You know, it's like. That explains your obsession with the ride, the ride yeah. out there. Yeah. Which I would say is what characterizes your playing. Yeah. And, and so it's just like, you know, like guys like Dave Cruzen. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like he plays exactly the same now as he did when he recorded that fucking record. Yeah. And that's unfair, but I know that he played in cover bands. <laughs> he played in the Boyds because I, he, oh. he came to my high school. And like, so I think if you play in a cover band, kind of like you were learning because you had to play this yeah. James Brown, right? Where yeah. if you don't have that and you're just like plopped into, hey, go. Yeah. <laughs> cool. no, that didn't work. I, did, I did plenty of that before in high school and other bands before where it's just like, yeah, we're just going to smoke a bunch of weed and jam in the rehearsal space for that six hours. It's awesome. like, right. yeah, it sounds awesome to you when yeah. you're baked and you're doing it. And then you're like, it's horrible. Well, and we've had that talk where it's like, Playing stoned or drunk is only fun for you. Well, yeah, well that's, uh, you know, there's a great Hemingway quote. It's about writing, but it applies to any art. It's like his quote is, uh, when, the, when the writer starts out, the writer has all the fun and the reader has none. And then when you get good... The reader has the right. The reader has all the fun, and the writer has none. Because you learn how to do your craft, and you're like, it's, it's hard it's work. It's craft. It's work. It's yeah. it is really <laughs> hard. Isn't that good? Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. So I, I didn't. I had. I was in the in the. Oh, I'll just play whatever I want. You're going to tell Matt Munster to kick my ass. Right. Uh, so I, thank you, Matt. I owe you forever. I yeah. Think I got. I have a total side topic on Neil Peart, given that you're a drummer. But I don't know if you want to get into that. Yeah, you know, we can always talk. About I was listening. The there was a song. I'm trying to remember what it was. Some mid-period rush because my rush thing is more like all the world's a stage. 
power trio before, before yeah yep. bef- before no, i mean maybe picks. up through 2112 and i saw them. maybe yeah <laughs> wow no i'm like early all the world's a stage is I still early stuff, you know, the stuff but anyway sucked. it was mid-period um <laughs> neil peart um well number one he's incredible well, the thing i'd never noticed i was listening to it in the car it was on ksw or something and i cranked it his sounds they're like oh, it's super musical there's no sound he makes that is clanky or noisy. Mm-hmm. Every and everything. So you tell me. I was gonna. Uh, I was gonna bug Musburger about it. <laughs> like his whole sound of his kit, from the kick through the cymbals, is all like really mid-rangey and musical sounding, which I'd never noticed before. Because I've never. I, I always admired him, but I wasn't a huge fan of it. I was like, oh wow, he's actually in a lot of ways the sound of his instrument among the three of them is the most musical. Yeah, tonal. Tonally, mm-hmm. the most, and I never thought about his how his kit is tuned or how he approached it. It's so all what's tuned. his thing? Yeah, it's all, yeah, it's all there. It's like, all. It's, it's, you, but it's he could tell you, oh, this is this, and this is this, and it goes from yes. here down to here, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was all in this nice mid range area. Like the kick didn't have a bunch of woof on it, and his his cymbal and and snare even didn't have a nasty high end to it. It was really cool. Part of that's obviously the production, but I'm sure right. it starts with how he approached the... Yeah. You, cons- should ask, you should ask Mike, though. He, he, ask he Mike. Knows, like, he knows all that stuff. I don't know yeah. anything. <laughs> I'm like, it does, does it, Martin, does it sound good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't? Will you fix it then, please? Fix <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it must actually sounds like John Bonham sometimes. Yeah. Uh, he, he can, he do, can it. do it. He can it's do weird. it. weird. Well, yeah. he's, so he played the the she said thing that I'm doing, mm-hmm. he did half the song. Oh, so he it's did. like, I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I can play Musburger parts all day long. Yeah. It's, all right. It's like right in my wheelhouse. Yeah. You <laughs> haven't played with both of you a bit. I can see you guys are, yeah. it's a lot of the same vocabulary and same approach. Well, I learned, like, I, I didn't try out for the posies, but I had a tryout for oh. them for when he quit. So, like, I learned Frosting on the Beater. Oh, it's a great I, record. And it was like, but I didn't. Yeah, but I didn't try out. I called them like, eh, I don't really want to try out. But like, yeah. I, I learned all those songs first. Yeah. And I was like, so I like, I've got him. That's not all of him, but like, that's that's his young. That's a, that's a great record, yeah. and, he, and he helped. You know, I think my favorite song on that record that I've covered is "Flavor of the Month," which I know that the turnaround start where it starts on the two four with the accent. That was uh, him, him actually. Yeah, he wrote that. Yeah, yeah, that's really. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's good stuff. Miles getting shout outs on, on the God on the God channel. He's the best. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny that you talk about like uh the cover band playing two notes until it's perfect, making it sound musical. I know that was a minute ago, but yeah. like it's such like an important process to go through. Like and it's painful too if you yes. haven't um yeah, I mean, to get... It, it's odd when some people can hear it and some people can't, and right. you kind of have to be forced to hear it. Well, so you've told the story about how you tell the dad band. That yeah, you, yeah. Like, either we can just have fun, or I can be a dick for, like, six months, <laughs> and we can be good. Well, I've been a dick for six years, and we're actually pretty good now. We, yeah. played, at the, we played a gig at Mercer Island, a block party thing, last Saturday, and I was like... It just sounds pretty good. It's good. It's it's you're getting, getting there. there. We are getting there. We are, you know, and that it, that's, you have a bunch of people who are willing, you know, type A enough to want to be good at whatever they do. But it's still, you know, it's a challenge to, Yeah. I don't think people understand. I mean, you hear athletes talk about it too. I wouldn't know. I've never been an elite athlete. Just like how much work it takes. Yeah. Yeah. And it just it's how same, much. Same idea though. Uh, and a lot of it is the, I mean, obviously there's a sort of training or practicing, but a lot of it is just. <clears throat> Uh, intent, right? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Just like, what? I'm going to do this. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going exactly. To <laughs> like your level of commitment. Yeah. You think about it like a great, you know, a great. I remember I used to bike race, like I was a crappy amateur bike racer, and I used to train with these pro guys, and I'm like, I don't know, how do you sprint 40 miles an hour? And they're just like, well, you just go out and sprint 40 miles an hour. You just do it. Yeah. You just do it. You just decide you're going to do it, and you do it. And so they have that self concept, whereas we've played music and gotten on stage, like, well, how do you get up in front of 20,000 people and rock out? It's like, you're just all in. <laughs> I want to I get Alex Honnold. 
uh-huh. on one of these podcasts yeah. and be like, dude, you and Slash are the same guy. Well, totally. And, you know, I used to do uh, climbing from age 15 to 30. Was I've watched that movie a million times because I used to free solo stuff. Not to an amateur person, it would look almost as crazy as what he did in terms of technical difficulty. It was... Far below, but it was you used still to free solo. Stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, all sorts of stuff. You used to free solo shit. Yeah, why? Right. Uh, just because I loved it. It was fun. Up into mid, I mean, or, fifth class. We didn't ask. Are you okay with the smoke? In yeah, here? I'm fine oh, with the okay. smoke. Yeah, yeah. Um, Keep it far away. No, it's fine. You can't. Um, you can't really. Um, <laughs> yeah, I used to. That. I mean, from like age fourteen or fifteen to thirty, uh, climbing was kind of my main interest. Yeah. Really? Well, that, yeah. Crazy cool. Yeah. Uh, the, that movie came out. Right, right before they were uh, guns was at the 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 gorge, uh-huh. and I was what, and I'm like, you know, he's got like he's up on the riser, and it's just him. Yeah, and he's holding, the same thing. He's holding this whole <coughs> right. all these people. Yeah. are on his fingertips. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, and it's like, oh, they're that's exactly the same and thing. Is, only it's... you have one life, <laughs> and he has like uh, you know fifty thousand lives right. in his hand. Yeah, but it's like that that mental. Yeah, this is what I'm just going to do. This the level of commitment is the same. Yeah. and and I've, I've in that in climbing I've done it, and that's probably the only sport where I've done it, or maybe skiing. Well, too. you've also you've also held the 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 uh, attention. Of thousands it's of people. It's pretty weird. It's a pretty weird experience. It's an intense yeah. level of commitment to <laughs> yeah. when you're like playing your song and 65,000 people are singing along. Don't fuck Jesus. that part up. Yeah, don't fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's lower consequence than free soloing. Lower consequence. Yeah, I love yeah, that. Lower. I love this. What I do, I see as, as and this is how Low I, risk. Lo, I, yeah, relatively low risk, very high High consequence. (laughs) (laughs) Which is how, you know, I love seeing that movie because it helped me tap into that part of myself that I, like 30 years ago, like, oh, I remember having that attitude. Yeah, that's... But then things change. And and I think that, I think he, you know, obviously that's understating because no one on the planet is anywhere near doing that. So it's not, it's not just low risk. You know, it, it's incredibly high risk, given that no one else. You know, like percentage-wise, like yeah. where he falls in the in the on the on the curve. You know, yeah. like on the. It's like the. Uh, it's just. It's otherworldly. It is pretty. I mean, I could understand what he was doing. I. I mean, I understood precisely what he was doing, and there were a couple parts of it that were. Crazy. The ones that freaked him out. Well, the one move he did in the middle, which is five thirteen B or C, which is the kick. Uh, yeah, yeah, the little, the very thin. And then there's the part at the bottom where he backed off in the first try, which right. is just friction climbing, where you really have no holds. You're just literally <laughs> like kind of. Yeah. And so I could that probably for him was scarier even than the technically rated harder move in the middle. Everything else I could understand, like. Above that move, there's a bunch of... It's very technically difficult, but it's like crack climbing. If you're confident and you have your hands and feet in the crack, it's just a matter of endurance and strength. And and what he did was an insanely... An insane high level in terms of athletics, but I it didn't... But that move that he did in the middle, like, he could... Yeah. There's no, there's no reason he doesn't... Like... There, there, there's a pretty good chance. There's a better than one or two percent chance. There's a better than one percent chance that he would miss that move, even if he was even relaxed. with all the practice he yeah, did. Yeah. You know, even with all that, they're just when the holes he, are that small. He fucking nuts it. He just uh, fucking, oh, he nuts it, and then they don't have the sound on. And he turns and looks at the camera, and goes, "Fuck yeah!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He just smiles stoked, right yeah. into the yeah. remote camera. And he's yeah. like, "Fuck yeah!" Yeah, that was it. And then he falls. Well, and what about the fucking guy in the bunny suit or the, the unicorns? Yeah. The greatest thing ever. It's like you're kidding me. You're kidding me. Yeah, that I watched that. Couple times a year. I saw it. Yeah, I've seen it. I don't know six or eight times. That was have seen you it. seen Alone on the Wall? No. This is totally like not like so. You have to watch <laughs> that because he does because he does. Uh, what's the other one that's not our captain? Uh, uh, Northwest Face of Half Dome. He does Half Dome. Yeah, he, which he did. But he fucking freaks out. And yeah, he, he like does a, freak out. He is a yeah, nervous and like he like. Yeah. And so oh, like that, there's a, you know there's a bunch of pictures of dudes on that ledge. Thank God, like, ledge. Yeah. yeah. But he's like. And you can yeah. hear him, and Jimmy Jen's like, "Well, we could just bang." No, no, just don't give me, you know. That's oh right. my and he's god! Because like, he didn't, 
do the practice thing. He talks about right. it in the in the second yeah. in the film where he's like, I, "That wasn't the experience I wanted." Right, exactly. I wanted, and I I, I, I kind of well, I'll sort of like uh, squeeze it by, squeak it by, mm -hmm. and uh, it's fucking crazy because he's. The mentality is, you know, I could relate to him, I remember, but um, I didn't go climbing. I went to the climbing gym a little bit over the last 25 years, but I didn't really go climbing outdoors for 25 years. And my, my older daughter got into climbing this last year. She's super into it. And so this summer, I re-geared up. I'd sold everything 15 years ago when the kids were little, and I got a rope and rack and all, all the stuff again. And we were going to the gym together, and then I'm like, okay, we're going to go out and climb in the real world. And we went up to uh, Index Town Wall, which is behind the town of Index off Highway 2, Washington State, and where I climbed hundreds of times. And we went to like the easiest area, <clears throat> and if it, it, the, I don't need to get into the grades, but we were climbing, we were roped, and we were in an area where I used to just like, if I couldn't find a partner, I'd just drive up there by myself and solo. Jeez. Yeah, and it's shit you'd look at, it's crazy. It's like, you know, three or 400 feet up and vertical. And, but I would just solo around all the, the area where I was with my daughter. And it's technically really easy. I was scared fucking shitless. <laughs> <laughs> she with, the I went there. with the rope, yeah. with the gear, I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe <laughs> that. Willy Willy Willy. Willy. Yeah, well, I cannot <laughs> believe that I could do this at one point. I could not access them. And I went two or three more times this summer climbing the real world. And it did get a little... Just like music, like you get the reps in, and it, yeah. I was yeah. a little less freaked out, but I was still like scared out of my mind. It's like you want to go back and punch Young Dave in the dick. Yeah, <laughs> get off that mountain! Yeah. Get off that mountain! Yeah. Are you crazy? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, things change. But that's, I mean, that's, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you're into climbing, and you're that type of personality, you're going to. If you gravitate towards that, I, I guess I understand it, but it's like... What? I felt like Alex Honnold when I used to solo. I would just... Usually it would be climbs I'd done before, and I'd be like, this is... I'm a thousand percent confident that I know right. what's there, and I know all the moves, and uh, it's secure, and there's no... I'm not going to do anything with any super sketchy moves or bad rock, and at least that's what I was... That was my concept. How do you know? Do you know you where bad rock is? The problem don't. is... The problem yeah, is exactly. the bees come out of the crack and sting you, or there's a right. rattlesnake oh, in the crack, or there's a bird, or a, a rock the size of... A quarter hits you in the head, and you know you're cut and bleeding, and you can't see. I mean, there are a billion things that can happen yeah. that are gonna. Yeah. Aside from just freaking out or, you know, running out of strength or whatever. Yeah. Well, Damn. I, I guess I don't know. Is that another? Is that another place where you're channeling? You know, like when you get up on a wall like that, and you're just you on this rock and no no rope. Is it? Oh, it's the same feeling as playing. I mean, it's all a form of expression, right? I mean, that's why I like. That's why I gravitated to free soloing because when you're climbing with somebody else, there's you spend ninety percent of your time like managing the rope and belaying mm. and dealing with the gear, really. Whereas when you go free solo, you're just moving. Yeah. You're expressing yourself. Yeah. You know, in time and space. Yeah. Just mm. like music. That's what was so rad about about uh, about free solo. It's like he just what is it like two and a half hours? It was it's like, crazy. Yeah, it's it, just like fast. Yeah, it's like yeah. an ant. So the the difference between the experience of like well, he and his partner Tommy called you know that route's been done in a half day roped, but historically a route like that takes two, three, four days of bivouac. You know, like the guys they passed who right. were bivouacking. So to have the feeling of doing it in two and a half hours instead of two and a half days, right. you can imagine. That's yeah. a very Fuck. different... And you're not carrying any gear. You're wearing your rock shoes, you get a t-shirt and shorts on, and you have a chalk bag. He's so stoked. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Well, Versus harness. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All, you know, yeah. pounds and pounds of gear and uh, <clears throat> hauling the rope up. Hauling your haul bag up. It's like hyper focus. It's like you have to be in that yeah. moment. There's yeah. no choice. I think that's what got me into it in high school, just that like the way out of teenage angst is to go to at that time totally. there was no indoor climbing, there was just Husky Rock down by the stadium there. Oh, right. Oh, right. Which is yeah. on my way to and from school when I rode my bike, so I just stop and mm. like <laughs> check out, like you're saying, like yeah. for an hour of just like total focus meditation or something yeah, yeah it yeah, is it's yeah. the same thing just forced yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> instead of because right. we're neurotic so it's yeah you exactly. can't sit and get exactly. there you have to actually have like no. a vehicle I, I mean yeah that takes yeah. you there yeah. Yeah, exactly it is a vehicle for <laughs> reflection and yeah. or for focus at least yeah, yeah. crazy yeah. 
It yeah. is crazy. Yeah, music's a lot of the same way, obviously, too. I was, uh, this is an earlier question, but have you ever been booed off stage? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> booed off, um, kind of sucked badly a few times, like in the mid 80s, playing it. Uh, downtown in what would have been the sort of pre-grunge scene. Not booed off stage. Uh, there oh, was okay. one time though, um, it was the before they regrouped bef- right before Chris quit. The last two shows that Soundgarden played in America, I think before they broke up they had some shows in Australia but they had two shows at Mercer Arena in Seattle and I think Rocket from the Crypt was supporting oh, them yeah. and somebody from Rocket from the Crypt had some like family emergency so it was announced that there would be a surprise opener and of course all of us it was like it's going to be Pearl Jam, it's going to be blah blah yeah. and it was us <laughs> and, and particularly, the, I think it was two nights, particularly the first night we got I mean we played it up like yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we're here Pearl Jam you know, and, and <laughs> probably <laughs> playing like that. Ten seconds of a lie, but yeah, we got some people. We got, we got, yeah, we got catcalled and heckled and and that's that because awesome. people were they thought it was going to be Alice or Pearl Jam or you know they're like yeah. oh it's going to be fucking amazing or it'll be Temple of the Dog or it'll be right. some it's like three right. dorks right. Chris yeah. playing twice yeah yeah, yeah. three dorks yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but I think that was that's a good question. I don't know. Have you ever been booed off stage? Many times. Really? Mm-hmm. And like many, doing, doing stand up or playing music? Uh, four or five? Music. Wow. Music. Yeah. Do no. stand up. Not trying to be funny. <laughs> no, I'm, no. If I'm funny, it's accidental. <laughs> unfortunately. I grew up very isolated. So, so I want to hear. Well, give me the best one at least. Let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> well, there's, there's two. There's. Um, we were opening for this band, uh, Rise Against. Have you oh, heard yeah, 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 yeah. I know who they are. So it was a comeback kid from Autumn to Ashes, Rise Against, and we were like second. Mm-hmm. So, um, And it was just like one of those bad shows from the start. Like we changed the set list. So like I was supposed to start out the whole set, you mm-hmm. know, and like. We hadn't been doing that for the fucking three months we had been on tour before. Yeah. So it's like right from the start, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, okay, Justin's going to come in any second now, you know, for the right. other guitar player. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just like the lead singer's like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> oh my shit. God. So it's like from the start. And then it was like, <clears throat> luckily we were done, but so was the audience and so there was like 4,000 so there was 8,000 middle fingers just like so as we're exiting it's just like wow I never had oh it was rough that's kind of cool yeah it was it it, uh, changed you know before that event you're in one spot (laughs) <laughs> in your life and in the universe and then after that event you're in a very different spot yeah, you, you, gotta, re- you got a reaction yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's better, better, it's boring. better than I'm trying, you know I, that, I think we avoided uh, the presidents once our first record was out on Sony we didn't open for, we had lots of offers to go out opening and we could have actually the big, we, ACDC wanted us to oh, open yeah. for them for like a year in the US and we were just like what the fuck are they thinking yeah. and Cannon I was like fodder. somebody would have killed us but We'd have been killed, yeah. yeah, but the middle of the first song, you know, <laughs> right. just like somebody just sort of, and we could have pumped up the rock sort of a part of what we did, and it, we, we would have been fine, but we could have gotten booed off stage opening for ACDC. I think Lenny Kravitz what? wanted us to open for him, too. Like, you could have gotten booed off stage, like, for a, a year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or at least for a night or two before they kicked us off the tour. Uh, but I don't think being, uh, there have been, an, I have, I remember early on, maybe never in the <clears throat> President's, but certainly in other bands, kind of being, embarrassed not necessarily uh, that we were bad starting with that we were bad but then that i had the wrong attitude about it like <laughs> I, instead of like trying to you know pull through like having a shitty yeah, attitude yeah, yeah. on stage yeah, and like yeah. this sucks and you know that's embarrassing yeah but i don't know that i should have been booed if i wasn't at some of those <laughs> gigs wow. you gotta just as you learn there's the only way out is through yeah. I mean, once you're up there, you're, you're you can't come back down the way you can. No, no. You're, yeah. you're committed. <laughs> That's a you great question. Embarrassed is, I, embarrassed is hard. Well, yeah, it's because it's, it's like, like you say, you either have a lead singer or a guy in the band that's like, you fucking suck. And yeah. then you have to sit there and practice, or you can do it to yourself. Yeah. But those 
those carterizing, those like flamethrower experiences. Through the crucible. Yeah. Through yeah. the crucible. Just being like, yeah. everyone thinks you suck right now. You know, yeah. you got to like, go back, oh, put that's... it all together. That's tried a... to be funny once, didn't get booed, actually. That's you trying to be funny up? is a mistake. No, I'm totally not funny. But uh, <laughs> when the presidents regrouped in like 03, 04, one of our first gigs was. We got invited. We'd done a few flyouts, and we did. We got invited to play at South by Southwest on mm-hmm. Saturday night free, and it was us like co-headlining with like Joe Jackson. Or so. It was cool. It was a cool nice. show. Yeah, it was like Alejandro Escovedo, Concrete Blonde, us, oh, Joe shit. Jackson, and this was during the Bush administration, right? <laughs> and so we're in the liberal yeah. Austin, yeah. And I get on stage. I'd forgotten that Texans are Texans first <laughs> and Texans yeah, yeah. first. Everything. So I, and don't like, mess with Texas. Exactly. Don't mess there are like ten or fifteen thousand people in that field. You know? oh, no. And I, yeah, I did the, like the middle of the set. I'm like, yeah, our name, the band name, used to be kind of cool, but now that we got you know ding dong in office, and it was just like crickets, you, t- literally crickets. Yeah, it's crickets and tumbleweeds. Ten thousand people, just like. Yeah, yeah. Stoop. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, oh, it was, I thought I thought in Austin it was gonna get you know because they're like they must yeah. hate George Bush because yeah, he's from Texas. Texas. He's yeah. an asshole. But no. he's yeah, there, he's no. there Russell Wilson. No, he's man. a Texan first <laughs> yeah. and Texan first and Democrat or Republican second. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. So that's that true. I was not booed, but I was booed. It was sort of uh, um, implied. <laughs> <laughs> implied. Yeah. Yeah. It was the Southern bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Bless you, yeah. honey. Bless, yeah. bless y'all. Yeah. Bless y'all. Play a song, would you, dear? <laughs> yeah, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it. Say anything. Oh, man. Uh, so not booed off the stage. That's a, God, that's a good question. I'm going to ask people that yeah, question. Yeah, steal that one. Yeah, it's, that's yeah, because it's yeah. like, it definitely, you know... I think, you know, so it might have even been kind of, I don't know, well, no, they got booed off the stage a bunch before I joined, because I joined this band <laughs> yeah, later. Was, they were yeah. still booing the other band when you guys were on. Well, the lead singer was so sharp. He's so fast, so he has the best comeback. So, like, yeah. one time someone was like, get off the stage, you know? Yeah. And he's like, when I get off, buddy, it's going to be on your face. <laughs> oh, that's so true. the whole audience goes, ooh, you know, like 2,000 people, we instantly went over. So I, I liked Chris Ballou's <laughs> default, which was, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, how's your band doing? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome Which, especially then yeah because they were all in band yeah exactly <laughs> yeah how's your band doing <clears throat> all right next time <laughs> yeah that's amazing yeah that's a good one <laughs> we uh we almost got booed off the stage once when it was a totally different band but it was uh rousey jeff rouse was in the band yeah and it was when i realized how important it was to have a very attractive band member, yeah, at yeah. least one. Yeah, you gotta have one at least. Yeah, it was because we were opening right when Alice and Chains came back, like that first show. At yeah, the yeah. We opened, but it was a new band. We were trying to like sound like Echo and the Bunnymen, oh. but the band we had before was just like, right, you know. Right. And so uh, they didn't realize <laughs> that you were trying to sound like Echo yeah. and the Bunnymen. It was it's, on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But and it was. It's one of my favorite bands. Like I loved it so much. But we yeah, So we're opening, and it's not going well. Fortunately, like, Jeff Rouse was abnormally good looking. And he's <laughs> so, him out with he's such a kind guy. He's yeah. so nice. And like so, he's like playing up there, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's like this string at the, in the more like of maybe 12 attractive women yeah and they're just they're all sitting next to each other all in a row and you, i'm just like watching the audience start to turn you know right. they've gone from like they got beers they're like and they're just the movement has stopped and it's like <laughs> body language one of these girls one of these girls from this row goes like we like them just yells yeah. that out <laughs> and like Everyone's so clapping. That's, yeah. you know, that's what I say to my cover band mates. The, the amateurs like you just if you get the girlies, I jump in, you're fine. That's that's all right. Which oh, we yeah. get. She yeah. was on Rouse's side. Yeah, yeah. what she you got. <laughs> yeah, it worked. We like him. We, we like, like him. And then they think, okay, yeah, the hot chicks fine. like him. Then fine. fine. Right. We, won't, we won't beat him up afterwards. <laughs> yeah. We won't <laughs> chuck our fourteen dollar beer at them. Yeah, they definitely could have back then too. It was like a yeah. buck twenty five probably. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so it's fun that we only talk about band stuff, but I have my Bible here. Wow. 
my Bible. I called yeah. home from tour to make sure this was a correct translation. Is it the King James? No, it's an ESV, an English <laughs> Standard Version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, actually, all oh, it's not very good. Do you guys quote scripture during the show? Oh, yeah. Like, he's gotten me. When, when, chapter when it's verse? just the two of us, we read. We read. Because I've never yeah. read the Bible. Oh, you haven't. The Bible's good reading. I mean, I've read it in kind of a studying philosophy and literature. It's the basis, obviously, for much of Western philosophy and literature. Blah, 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 blah. blah, blah, blah. Did you uh, start with the Old Testament? Um, I had one class in high school where we read a lot of the Old Testament, and I kind of just over the course of various, like, comparative religion and philosophy classes. That's fucking awesome. I mean, the book of Job is a must yes. read, for sure. It's my favorite. Um, we all suffer. Genesis is a kind of just cool because it's the Big Bang in a few pages. And the Nephilim. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. I haven't read it for a long time. I was, nope. I was talking about this with, with my younger daughter the other day about... Because yeah, they're both in college, my kids, and reading translation is weird. I just am not, I'm more and more not into reading anything that's been translated. And obviously the Bible's been translated and transliterated. Once or twice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, once or twice. <laughs> um, that's sort of a, so, yeah. um, so that's, a, you know, obviously it can still be thought-provoking in this the, the outline of the story can be compelling but I sort of felt like for me the next level to get into it is you'd have to go back to like Greek. actually dig yeah. into learn, the earlier learn language. Greek. Yeah, yeah. I'm, or, or at least key phrases and understand right. you I, know differences of interpretation of key passages because that makes a ton of sense yeah <laughs> super boring to talk yeah, but, about, but it makes a lot of sense. I, I, hey, that's all I do is listen talk to about books. the Bible's shortcomings. Yeah, I I love textual criticism. That's what it's called. Well, People who I read think the original that, I mean, language. the one thing I did take away from, well, one or two things from biblical studies, obviously just Old Testament versus New Testament. Old Testament is eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, and the New Testament's turn the other cheek, right? Which in the thing, if you kind of dig into that and read the New Testament especially, it's like, it's fucking radical. Jesus was super, super, super radical philosopher. Like, literally, you're in a dog-eat-dog -dog culture, and he's like, no, yeah. turn the other cheek. I mean, that's <coughs> out there. That's out way there. Way out there. It's still out there. Mm -hmm. You know, Proud Boys aren't turning the other cheek. It's, it's not, you know, I mean, it is way out there. Yeah. So I think that's kind of the most interesting thing about the Bible to me is just how extreme it is. Yeah. Uh, or or the New his, Testament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to like Jesus uh, in any form of the Gospels, even though I know it's all flawed. <clears throat> but I... I grew up so fundamentalist. I was like oh, homeschooled. Okay, uh, so you got uh, the fall. Oh, I literally taught myself to read by memorizing the Bible. Like, wow. so <clears throat> I didn't learn to think until I got in bands and we were on tour, and you know, people would have harder arguments to my right. theologies, and I'd right. be like, "Wait, is, like, actually, this is <laughs> wait, wait a second. In, uh, <laughs> green rooms." Uh, so, but uh, as we've been reading through it again, because before we started this, I was like, "Man, I gotta." fill in some gaps in my knowledge because I've read the Bible a lot I've memorized sections full books right. even but uh, it is from a fundamentalist perspective what is it with the fundamentalist northwest like who was I talking to hanging out uh, having coffee with a little bit like 10 years ago Noah Gunderson yeah the whole family is like yeah. fundamentalist sing along how they all started music is very important to church it's how you get people hypnotized so sure. they give money later. I was listening to an interview with Lizzo on NPR yesterday and she was talking you know and it, most people who are good at music unlike me started in the church <laughs> <laughs> you know people who actually know how to play. Yeah. What's it? Alan, what's his, what's that amazing soul singer guy from up here? Alan Stone? Yeah. Was he a churchy guy mm -hmm. too? Oh, mm -hmm. see, it's not surprising at all. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just like white, no churchy. Well, see, that's because you got intelligence, you know. Uh, I just, I, I, don't I, know I, know I the world kept why. I think he, luckily, you have some intelligence. <laughs> I, was, that, I just... mentioned that funk band I was in at college, and, and actually, that guy, Matt Monastery, who was a white guy too. From Brooklyn, but this band was like the Rainbow Coalition. It was a complete mishmash of ethnicities. Yeah. I was sitting leaning against the wall one day before rehearsal and in the sun and my shorts, you know, like jock guy. And he walks up and he says, Man, you are the fucking honky's honky. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I guess that's true, man. I guess I am. Solid. Solid, Jack. 
<laughs> the point being, well, that's that's American churchification. That's yeah. that's a particular flavor of religious celebration that is unique to America, really. I'm all yeah. uh, many so religions celebrate with music, but in the U.S., yeah, the Catholic Church is not wildly soulfully musical <clears throat> but they have all that cool shit to look at there there's cool so they have all the big things and the hats and the things well the if you think of the mass being in latin up until 60 years ago 50 years ago that was yeah. more musical i think mm -hmm. if you to hear yeah, the mass kind of chanting and, like, and yeah yeah there's a cadence to it yeah there's, there's still a cadence but now you know what they're saying so yeah, it's, it's less mysterious yeah <laughs> it's less interesting right it's not fun. it is interesting the same shit over and over again <laughs> you gotta like you gotta listen there's a song a great, great, great song that my bandmate Chris wrote years ago called The Dinner Table Breakdown in 1979, which Ooh. is his family, his mom in particular, was deeply religious, okay. Catholic, if I remember right. But it's a song about just being in like seventh or eighth grade and just freaking out. It's a brilliant song, freaking out like about God and Carl Sagan and billions oh, of stars. Man. And yeah, yeah, it was like, I'm about to get a Hail Sagan tattoo. Wow. He changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, this is the, this is the song for you. I'll, I'll okay, see if yes. I'll look after we get off. Yeah, yeah. Hell really yeah. Good. I think it's still somewhere on the interwebs. Yeah. You mentioned philosophy. Are you into that, then? I guess I was. I mean, you know, I was like a humanities. I don't know if I was into humanities as a, as a student because I was genuinely interested in it or if it was Even because honky, I honky. sucked at math. <laughs> <laughs> but I was good at anything that involved language. I don't know. Yeah, I was deep. Yeah, I mean, the, I, my undergraduate degree is in literature, so it's basically cool. philosophy. So, I, yeah, in high school and college, I guess I was most interested in like... What was your major? Uh, English and American literature. Man, And mine was the literature. No, no, just just English major. I mean, oh. yeah, for lack of a better way to say it. Gotcha. Yeah. Katie has a minor in literature. Yeah. So that's what I did. I don't that's know. I was just, yeah, I don't know. I was into the world of ideas from that, from that age where you're like 13 to 15 and your brain just explodes and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, like, everything is just... Pink Floyd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All that. See, I didn't get any of that. I, I got all that. You were constrained yeah. by your, your yeah, fundamentalist yeah. Uh, framework that you probably were in with your household and your church. But stacking chairs. Church. Yeah. 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 No, I was... I, yeah, I was fully into all that and wanting to explore the life of the mind. And That's so bad. Do you do psychedelics or anything? Uh, it, early in high school, a couple times, and had horrible experiences. And oh, no. Oh. Then never did them again. I think basically I had pan uh, one time when I was high, I had a panic attack. Oh no, that sucks. So I'm not a big believer in psychedelics for anybody who's under 25. I actually agree. I think, you know, your executive function's not right really there. formed till you're 25 it's or not so. Solid. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even smoke weed till I was 30. Uh, yeah, I'd like to I kind of was more interested in all that when I was younger, and by the end of high school, I was mostly not interested. But yeah, my kids, I told them just like, if you want to do any of that stuff, just wait until you're 25. Yes. Because that's fine. You know, exploration is fine, but you should wait until you're kind of, your cognitive abilities are pretty yes. well yeah. established. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. So, it's but I was interested in it like we all were with the doors of perception and, totally. you know, all that stuff. And I had a lot of friends who did a lot more of that than I did. And they did it not from a like, let's just get crazy, but from a like, let's explore. Let's, yeah. Um, uh, our spirituality and con interconnectedness, but um, yeah, it was not. I don't know. Maybe I just wound a little too tight. Or maybe, not the most relaxed guy in the world. I don't know if you could, probably got to see a lot of cool sunsets and views from all that rock climbing, free solo. Uh, the, yeah, well, the, and that's a that was a similar experience. Yeah, I feel like being yeah, that time heavy in high nature. school, and uh, you know, yeah. a lot of the people that I was started to do that kind of stuff within middle school and the start of high school they went a little deeper into it and i started to get more into Nature. outdoor sports and which i'd grown up doing but i just that became my circle of friends at that time was those people have you seen the the alpinist yes that guy that's, <laughs> you know it's interesting because obviously as just a sort of hollywood narrative it's less compelling than girlfriend thing his girlfriend's still a hardcore climber um but he's a way more intriguing character dude 
because he's and the stuff he's doing that's not cool. Well, the stuff he so like well, the stuff Alex Honnold's doing on solid rock in Yosemite, where there's almost no rock fall, the rock's all good. He's done the climb a million times. Going and doing the stuff that that guy did in that movie Sight on mixed ice and snow and rock. There are so many variables. And some of the stuff, there's the scene in the opening and the closing. He's they've got some some kind of footage of him summiting, and that's a mountain, Slussy Mountain, which is up by the um, Washington B.C. border, that I haven't climbed, but I'm familiar with it. And like, and that, and he's doing that just kind of to give him some B-roll. That was not even one of the hard things that he did. But what he's doing there is like, damn, insane. It's that, and and he died, of course, because. At what he was doing, but he was a fascinating character because he was, you know, Alex Honnold has a very clear worldview and his, and sense of his risk assessment. That guy was just like, I don't know, I moved to Squamish, I partied a whole bunch, took a bunch of drugs for a while, and then I decided I would. And then he and he was not, you know, he would ignore his sponsors, he'd disappear for months at a time. He was I fat. Love it those was really people. interesting. <laughs> That's yeah, worth I watching if people. you haven't seen it. I haven't. No. It's it's the it's the scariest. It, like it makes yeah. it makes free solo look like yeah. kindergarten. Well, and Jeez. in terms of if you know about climbing, it it really is. Well, the like, shit where like I because and and correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of that is he's showing up there and going. Yeah, like, and figuring out on the fly. Yeah, like, he's figuring. Yeah, there's no way the things he's doing you couldn't practice them because they're so big and they're so exposed and they're so intense. It's or, not a control. Or they're gone the next day. Yeah, the ice is gone the next day. <laughs> the ice and snow are gone the next day, and the conditions are completely different. Shit, he's like going between mediums where he's going oh, yeah. stone, and then oh, he's no. on the ice thing, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, and then there's one shot where it's like the ice thing is only this wide, yeah. and then I'm like, what are you? Yeah. That's not safe. No, that, it's, not, it's not what he was doing. Within, <laughs> that is not safe, within sir. A certain, <laughs> Get down from there. Within a certain set of limits, what Al Tunnel was doing was safe. Because it's pretty controlled. Right. He was right. controlling the level of risk. Right. He, was, he, he could stop at any point and go, okay, Bring give me a helicopter. rope. Give me, yeah. Right. Whereas that, that guy in the Alpinist, what he was doing at any moment, he could have died any number That's of so 20 or 30 yeah, no, you guys, you have, it's like, <sighs> and he's so it's interesting as a movie just because he's it's less good as a sort of as I said as a narrative but it, he's, well, he's, he's more dies. Oh, yeah he man. dies and he's just not an easy he's not an easy story to tell he's a weird he's just a kid who grew up in, I think in Alberta and like just got into climbing but he went through a weird intense partying phase and he is totally sort of ambivalent about promoting what he did And but he's another kid who seems like he's entirely on the spectrum and, totally. that, and that the the uh, traditional schooling was, yeah. he didn't fit into the hole, into no. the hole. Yeah, um, I want to talk. I would love to talk to Alex Honnold about being on the spectrum and like, do you yeah. have you ever like thought about being? Because there's no way that guy's not. Oh, he's totally on the spectrum, and he they talk about his dad being on the spectrum, right, and, right. and I'm sure he's. I mean, he's, he's a very self aware guy when you hear him talk. I yeah, happy. but you never hear him talk about that. No, you know he's fluent it's French. Be a thing. Yes, I did because his have mom you, spoke French. Have you seen it? Like, no, is he just the, a French interview? <laughs> Because he's exactly the same guy but with exactly the same accent. Like he's not, he's not concerned <laughs> with sounding French. He's oh, just right. using it as a tool. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like this is my tool, and he, you know, blah, blah, blah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's like the exact same. <laughs> the same. No affectation. That's right. French. It's right. just Alex Honnold, the climber dude, <laughs> speaking French. Yeah, 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 you know, because he's got that kind of, <laughs> yeah, he's got that sort of peculiar. Uh, he has a verbal um, gait. Yeah, he does. I agree. Oh. And it's just. <laughs> It's the same French. in French. <laughs> and it must drive the French fucking crazy. Either that or they love it. Because they, they really want you to sound French if you know that. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a little bit of 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 French comprehension, so I'll go. I'll go. It's I've watched funny. a lot of interviews with him. Dude, because he's I, a I've fascinating some, guy. I've done some black holes. Yeah, I have. Yeah, uh, really. Just, I don't think there's any black hole on the guy in the Alpinist because no, no. he didn't talk to anybody. Oh, right, right. Yeah, there's no. You can't. Do no, it. he didn't go promote or do interview. He I died. Love, but I'd never heard I of him before would, that no. movie. I had been still following climbing a little bit. I, you know, he he didn't promote himself very much, but in climbing magazine or the website, there'd be occasional like, so this guy went and did this insane free solo, and he, he what he did was so notable, and people did know about it. But he he didn't he wasn't on the cover of the magazines or anything. He just right. didn't want to do that, which yeah. is, makes him even more kind of awesome. fascinating. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just living in the woods with his girlfriend in a tent. But probably, not, but like a little not necessarily surprising. 
Like no. a guy who, like, same with Honnold. Like, those guys aren't going to be out there for the. They're not the lead guitar player. Dude, no, so much, you know the, what I mean. They're not so going to talk. Bible not gonna, no, you know. that and that guy, the the sort of guru in the in free solo, uh, Peter Croft, who yeah, is yeah. My, kind of my age, and he was around when I was starting as a teenager and in my twenties. He would be around down at Index and Leavenworth, oh, okay. and go to Squamish, and he'd be I'm there. Like go to somebody. Around. But and he was a legend then, in you know, like when we were in our mid twenties. But yeah, same thing. Like you'd never know. Because he's alive, and that's well, and, well, and he would never promote himself ever. That's kind of like that. that's the other part of the you know, old school ethos. Like uh-huh. people have done like some of the most amazing athletic feats of all time. Like you know. the concern with the work. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's like there's only yeah. I only yeah. have time for one thing. It's like Einstein <laughs> having one suit. You know, the weird thing I think about this a lot with with amateur because I love sports. I've always played you know i've done played team sports all the time and done all these outdoor sports ski racing all this stuff the interesting thing about i kind of think of them and music as the same the interesting thing about music is there's or should be an audience right but if you're an amateur athlete like i feel like i'm better you know i started skiing when i was two and Damn, my body's starting to let me down a little bit. But I feel like I can express myself skiing better than I can express myself playing the guitar. Damn. Like when if I, if they, you know, I can sort of see a line mm-hmm. and conceive it all in an instant and just rip it. And it's a, it's, it's just like playing a solo or something. Do you listen to music while you're skiing? I don't. No, but it feels musical. And um, yeah. and um, I feel like I can do that better than. Um, playing music but it's different because playing music you really kind of feel like you are kind of doing it for other people i mean you, you focus on the work but ultimately it's to like we were talking about start the conversation to convey a feeling mm-hmm. although i am yeah, the skiing there you sometimes there is an audience people are on the channel oh, yeah, they see you and i love that yeah, as a kid. i really love oh, ripping yeah. under the left or line and having people jump the yeah, oh, exactly eating shit. yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so, that. did you see that picture over there? Oh yeah, free dogging at, at Jackson Hole. Yeah, and the guy on the lift. Yeah, totally. So that's Fred a, Eagle. Yeah, yeah. My yeah, dad. no, I so I, there's I kind crashed. of I crashed. You did? I knew oh, I was that. Gonna, oh, yeah. that's beautiful. I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna hit. Well, there was a there was a photographer to take a picture of the people. I'm like, hey, will you take another one? You know, there was like a yeah. guy from Jackson Hole. And some, you know, he's like, oh yeah, they just follow people around. Too. Right, right. So I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna yeah. hit it more than I'm comfortable with because I want to get a good picture. It's a good picture. You have yeah. the full, you know, <laughs> it's pretty, starfish spread yeah. eagle. You got the hands mm-hmm. out. And then after that, shortly after that, it was Jerry of the Day on yeah. the landing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Train wreck, yeah. That's so, I am. Um, my mom would take us up every Wednesday to Snoqualmie. Oh, yeah. And if we got our homework done oh. in time, we could go ski until it got dark. Nice. So I grew up like, I'd, we'd ski twice, three times a week, actually. Oh, nice. It, being homeschooled was, there was actually some I'm cool sure. parts. Yeah. yeah and I'm, I'm starting sure. to appreciate them. But like, yeah. you know, I got a job when I was 14, yeah. building homes and like, yeah. Um, but. Uh, my brother is he can do like backflips and shit like he's into it (laughs) these kids it's so crazy he's so good you know I, I snowboarded uh, I skied forever mm-hmm. until I got really good at it, and then it got boring. And then I yeah, started snowboarding. Yeah, it can get boring. And snowboarding, yeah, it's another thing to do. But no. it's like no. music on. No. I've never done it high. I should. I've, That's I amazing. Don't think, right? Yeah. I can only imagine. Acid, mushrooms, weed. Dude, it's all, it's mushrooms, all really good. and I can't imagine. That would be yeah. beautiful. I'm trying to think. That was kind of the thing in high school was to get high. I think that I was sense. always just too into being a good skier to do that. <laughs> right, me too. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, just trying to keep up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I really I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the psychedelics yeah, no. on that. Oh, oh I, I could remember. see that. Well, I thought weed made you a loser. Forever, oh, yeah. like yeah. that was my opinion of it. So that's now why you know it's it. not just your opinion; it's fact. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's brother. been losers and read the Bible, man. <laughs> no, it was like thirty. All my f- most successful friends smoked weed all the time, and I was like, I was teaching. I, all these- yeah, no, it definitely. Uh, I think it's a spectrum ADHD thing for me. Well, I, so. I, there, I went to school. I'm not going to say his name, but I went to school with one guy from kindergarten through 12th grade. And we went to, we'd switch schools at the same time and grew up in the same neighborhood. And um, he smoked, starting in high school, he smoked weed constantly through mm-hmm. college. Went to Yale, grad school at Yale, 
<laughs> graduate degree in in German literature and philosophy oh, and language. Wow. Then went, I don't know if he still smokes a bunch of weed, went back to law school at Probably. Like 45 or 50, <laughs> went to the University of Chicago Law School, like, you know, edit, law Damn. review editor. It doesn't seem to have slowed him down. Right. Yeah. right. It's yeah. weird, right? I mean, he I was, was high all the time in high school yeah. and, and afterwards in college. and so. Probably not a big drinker, though. I don't remember, but I don't think so. No, I don't remember. Yeah. Those, guys, those guys don't tend to be. And I've always thought you have to smoke weed all the time or never. Oh. It kind of might be. You might be right about I've that. I kind of, you know, like three or four years ago, I, I hadn't, I think the last time I smoked weed, since that's a... a parallel theme in your show was uh, maybe 1991 Damn. on a road trip to go climbing at um, the Tetons and um, but like three or four years ago I started taking CBD at night it's great yeah. and that kind of worked but I found it slightly depressive it did help me sleep but the next day I always felt slowed kind down. of slowed down mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. but then like three years ago I started just doing like five milligrams of THC in the evening it's great I love it. I do, do, do it very, wanna, very often. Do you want to smoke some weed? No, I don't. Okay. Just, yeah. you, you should have asked. You no, I'm going to work up to that. Yeah. But, no, I've been doing the little edible mints, like five, maybe max out at 10 milligrams. Yeah. And oh, usually man. I don't feel high. There have been a couple of times where I've done it during the day where I'm like, oh, oh my that's what this is. Oh, yeah. Right. Like being in the airport laughing uncontrollably, you know. Hello. Hello. Hey, Guest how are you? Hello. How are you? <laughs> now we are four. <laughs> Drugs, doing mm-hmm. drugs while Talking we're Talking about skiing. God and drugs. Well, that God and drugs is a that's a uh, big know. deal for me because like what I found as I approached thirty and nothing of what the, my pastors and church and fan, you know you know friends were telling me about life in the Bible was real. Oh. Um, it was hard because I also found out I was the only one that had read the whole Bible. Oh, you were, you had actually done the work. They I, were just I talking still about do. it. I listened yeah. to four books on the way here. You yeah. know, like yeah, I, I'm fascinated by it. You know? Right. And so when they start saying stuff that's not real, not cohesive, and right, you know, it's like so. It, I basically it, the losing my faith was like the darkest period I could have ever, I couldn't even imagine how hard it got and um, I was more of like my dad was a military guy so we grew he's kind of like also a hippie so it was a weird blend yeah so it's like very disciplined so meeting all those successful people that smoked weed and it's like literally having my paradigm of a someone who uses drugs right just shattered right i literally had i had a student who was making like you know he was an eye doctor the best surgeon in the world or something on capitol hill and he gave me mushrooms and he's like you wow. know i've been teaching him for a year and he's like i love you uh i know what you're going through wow you need to take these I, and it's not for everyone i grew them myself blah 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 and he said you have to have eight hours of free time and not be stressed out and that just never happened right so yeah, like, no, yeah. Like, no, three yeah years. three years later yeah so it was about four yeah but after i did them it, it yeah. allowed me to realize <clears throat> especially this one dmt uh, yeah took way too many hits of that one night and then i was like damn like i don't know fucking anything yeah i literally know nothing and so it, it in this weird way it allowed me to like start this podcast with him and like talk about religion in this uh open way now without all that well shedding all that baggage just, 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 just unpacking just unpacking just it like that. Yeah, do we need this like, what's that yeah. that's a weird one yeah so uh it's incredibly spiritual for me the and i, I think it may be one of the more beneficial things actually my, my bank account grew i started making my bed i got in shape <laughs> it was like the exact opposite of what you think like right. i got a better job I, right you know i got back in the band i liked you know it was like yeah. every, you know it was like it helped me piece everything uh, I mean, all signs point that way. Certainly, with I'm, I'm read the literature. I read the Michael Pollan book. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, and, and I have a, another good friend from high school as a surgeon, and also a believer, you know, practicing Buddhist and cool. believer in alternative states therapies of, of all kinds, states yeah. of mind, and yeah, uh, it, there's all that. There's a lot of press right now it's about pretty, psychedelics a being legalized for, particularly for. Was it post traumatic stress disorder totally. and and well, uh, they're legal and in Washington all that State. kind of stuff? Yeah, and I think everything's legal in Oregon. Yeah, yeah. it's an interesting time to be alive. 
<laughs> Oregon. <laughs> I love Portland. I love Oregon. They're crazy, but I love they them. They are crazy. Yeah, it's Portland. It's Portland. You know, it's it's Portland. It's I great. love Portland. That just they seem to be. They seem to have some of the same challenges we have. Just I had them earlier, and they have them worse still. And I couldn't tell you why. Oh man, that part is incredibly rough. Yeah, yeah. So what was the? How did you guys come to do this show? Do I get to tell them, or do you want to tell them? Oh, you can tell them. Yeah. So yeah. it's funny because like I was this kid from Maple Valley that mm-hmm. really believed in Jesus and I wanted yeah. to be a missionary. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time uh, doing mission work, like going to Mexico uh-huh. and doing, got, worked at a Bible college in Russia. Wow. And um, yeah, it was pretty, it was really fun. Yeah. Uh, and obviously like very sheltered. Like, have you ever seen Kingpin? You know, that bowling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like straight up that Amish guy. Oh, like okay. I was, I didn't know anything about anything. <laughs> right. So I started playing in all these bands because I, that's what I wanted to do. And right. At first I was in all these Christian bands. And sure. those, you know, if you start a band in a Christian circle, you're instantly the biggest thing in the world because uh, there's sure. a built-in audience. Right, right, so right, like right. A, yeah, there's, you know, the, you, it's like we had no bands, now we have one band. Right. You know? uh, right. So it's like and you And they are gods we among men. Yeah, so it's like you get, you get good gear, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So then I got in this uh, crazy rock band and through the years I met him and like I was about, I feel like I was 19. At the, I, I keep thinking it's the I Spy. Uh, him and Duff were there I saw, and I was playing the show talking to some fans and he comes over to me and he's like I literally don't even know him and uh, he's hadn't he, we already been at the Rocket Records though? no that was, that was no right? I didn't okay so Loaded played in Maple Valley, Washington at a record store. When you were... I was 18. You were 18. Yeah, and I'd gotten a job at Starbucks next to the record store, and mm-hmm. I'd never met a non-Christian. So I was, like, <laughs> incredibly isolated. Wow. Now I get a job at Starbucks where I, like, read my Bible before and after my shift in the lobby. And uh, that record store, I heard fucking Guns N' Roses for the first time. Oh. And it just... I literally started dressing different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> really? like, it was like a... Yeah, it was, it was a thing. And then was it Martin, the guy that owned it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was rad. He was like, "Oh, you know, they're going to be uh, playing here pretty soon." And so I, I've never seen them. I'm not allowed to listen to this music. I have right. to like hide it under my pillow, right? You know, when I bring it home yeah. and shit. And so I go to this show, and it's Jeff Rouse, Mike, you, and Duff playing. Oh, and yeah. I didn't even know what Duff looked like, so I thought Rouse was Duff. So afterwards, I go up to Rouse. I'm like, oh, "What was it like playing?" Oh, because he was playing bass. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And Duff was short hair. Look, if you weren't ready right. for yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it was a uh, uh, yeah, v- peculiar. Yeah, and I had like heard "Welcome to the Jungle" three times at this point in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's pretty yeah. fresh. So two years later, I'd like gotten into. 15 bands in Seattle right one of them played in front of him and he just like walked over and grabbed me and was like what are you doing come over here so he brought me into this circle of all these rock stars and then uh, years later I started like I'd always work for them I'd always like help tech and uh, okay. go out and in any green room he'd be like uh, so tell me about the Nephilim so we would just be (laughs) as soon as I found out he like knew the Bible what about this yeah (laughs) so you guys would just get in there like oh that's Genesis 5 yeah it's really interesting yeah Yeah. Yeah. we do this without the weed though yeah yeah well and I was like still saving myself for marriage and I was probably drunk yes yeah if it was after a show (laughs) yeah well, there was not much rock and rolling for me back then. It was a lot of just reading the Bible and playing guitar. Like, I was... But, I mean, I, I mean you obviously got good at guitar, so what was the... You were hearing some music, and you were... Oh, I was full in once I started get. I, I started playing for this guy, Burke Thomas. He played in that band, Pris. He's, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was a bass player in Pris. Okay. And so once I got with him on tours, he'd play all this cool music. Mm-hmm. You know, in that van... Uh, it's like this weird sacred place to me now. Yeah, I'd never thought your, I would. It was your college of musical knowledge. Because whoever's driving is going to be DJ. Right, you're right. going to hear like everybody has the different. Smiths, the Misfits, like right. you know, even Erasure, Echo and the Bunny. Yeah, you know, like right. um, the Refused, like all mm-hmm. these. You know, it's like I've never even heard music like that. I've, I know, Pink Floyd. Yeah, I'd never heard uh, Dark Side of the Moon until I was on tour. Oh dear, isn't that crazy? Yeah, it was weird. Good thing you went on tour. 
It was very, yeah, it was really important for me. <laughs> so what's your relationship with your family and all this Ooh, like now? And it's that's interesting that. that you bring that up. Uh, yeah, it's since the podcast, not so good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, since the podcast. Yeah. They well, listened you know, to the podcast and decided that you're not okay or? Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, when I, so I was in very active in this church that I grew up in. I was like a youth leader, uh, led worship, mm -hmm. was what they call a deacon. I signed, sure. I signed the paper that I wouldn't dance. Wow. Yeah, because Southern Baptists. Well, you haven't danced so far I today. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that, I, that I'm aware of. That I've yeah, I was dancing all the way here, actually. Yeah, so I guess I'm sinning. But yeah. yeah. And so, uh, you know, for me to express my real views on things oh. uh, now, well, especially coming you, from I'll that, give you is, some points for cojones to just do it. Well, you know, the problem is, is a lot of the uh, theology and teachings mm -hmm. that I grew up with are unfortunately just dogmas. Right. And there was something that, an, you know, a person with a really great heart, possibly, most likely these pastors, Hopefully. have heard from other pastors. Sure, yeah. And they, I guess they didn't bother to check in. It was a lot harder to read ancient Greek back in the day, but now they have like Bible Hub and you can go look at every translation forever. Yeah. And now we have, you know, textual criticism. And so when you start digging into like the Bible is inerrant. Um, right. And you like find out that that's completely wrong. Yeah. See yeah. my, my, I mean, I mentioned that uh, class in my senior year in high school was a great sort of overview humanities class. And uh, I, while we read the Bible, we read a book. I can't remember if, I don't know if it's still well known. It's called God Wrestling. It's just about wrestling oh, into faith. So we were approaching it from, a, and obviously I was not in a faith-based school or environment. So um, it was a completely different approach, but you know, sort of more coming from the unexamined life is not worth living. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, fundamentalist Religion can be exactly the opposite, right? Don't it's ask questions. Don't. I, yeah, I get yeah. a lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I came, I came from the ask as many questions as, but you know, the extra credit for asking more questions kind of culture. That's all familiarly yeah. and in, in scholastically. So I had a lot of support and kind of just being the why, 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 why. Yeah. Well, that's that's what was so confusing about okay. my upbringing is that my dad was is like this really smart. You know, sort of right-brained guy who's also a mechanic and like and flies planes and and, but he is the Catholic and he's like devout and has faith. That's interesting. And and that was just like Catholicism. I don't fucking understand. Well, how can you buy it? Mm -hmm. You know, like even now, even you know, he's eighty-six now, and he's still you know, it's just I it's, have a it's, couple it's, friends who are like his leg. fit that who are our age ah. who fit that who are super super smart. You know, like. Stanford Business School, super successful, and they're like devout Catholics. And I'm, like, you know, there's an in, there's a tension there that I'm not sure I can resolve. I mean, what's wrong with the Elks or, or like yeah. or the Masons or something? You <laughs> yeah, know, hot it's yoga. like at least they're not. You do hot yoga. Band practice one <laughs> right. night a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why is it got to be like this? This multinational corporation. You're it's funding. pretty weird. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, pretty weird. We rail on it almost every time. Actually, it's pretty. We've gotten out of the habit. We, should, got, we yeah. should get back into it. We that. should get back into it. I, I, I mean, there's the social fabric, cultural value, which is. All, I mean, that's the whole thing. Because I thought I mentioned that one of my two best friends from high school has been a practicing Buddhist for a long time, and I, I even though I've meditated a ton in a Zen mode, I guess you'd say, and read tons of Buddhist philosophy and literature, I can never say, I'm a fucking white guy from North America. <laughs> like, that is not culturally, I'm always going to be like a Martian, right? right? Buddhism is not, I mean, I'm a Christian culturally, period. Right, that's my, <laughs> my culture. Geographically. Geographically, Geographically yeah. really academically, if you think of the academic tradition that I got educated in totally. from preschool through graduate school, totally. is a Judeo-Christian approach. And so the idea of like trying, so to me it's as much about, and then the church stuff I have been involved in, you know, just weddings, funerals, uh, baptisms. It's about the community, right? It's a yeah. community yeah. Yeah, but and gathering part, place. Well, and we don't bash that part. Like that, we yeah, understand we, that. we think that's broken. We're trying to fix it. See, I mean, at least in the way I grew up mm -hmm. with it, that is actually toxic. 
Right. I mean, that's the interesting thing about well, the isolationist thing. fundamentalist yeah. thing is, yeah. is that, you know. They're well-intentioned people are there, and I've met many, many, many great human beings through these churches. Well, but, well-intentioned, uh, right. like, but their intentions are faulty. Like their foundation. Well, they just want to do good, but they don't have enough critical thinking skills. Well, they want to save your skills. soul, and your soul's not really in danger. <laughs> Right. You know, so it's like foundationally, there, there, yeah. there's yeah. this Primary. delusion. Well, right. right. And then it becomes these echo chambers where Systemic it's like. delusion. <laughs> right. It's an echo chamber, right? Because yeah. it's such an aesthetic experience, church. I think it's beautiful. Isn't like, that the new system of the down album title? Systemic delusion. But they sound so good. That's what you want to do. I remember that when that record that was all huge came out, our drummer was listening to it, and he was arms folded in the van after a gig, and he's like, fuck. You know, because he thought it sounded amazing. And yeah. he hates the band. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, it's like, we hate this band, but those fucking records slap. Those records are fucking Okay, that's it. a completely unrelated topic. Band you hated till you didn't hate them. Like, oh. because you saw them, or... Because I have a Swift. One. Oh, I'm not surprised at all. I've Taylor heard that. Taylor fucking Swift. God damn. She writes great songs. You, you so can't hate Taylor Swift. You can hate the p- persona, but you can't hate well, the song. I She's written too many good songs. Dude, she knew so that good. I sung into a, a hairbrush sometimes when I was... You know what I'm saying? Like, she that was too you. personal yeah. to yeah. me, and so I yeah. had to hate it. I was like, fuck yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. But then, like, you know, I'm driving, and I'm like... This song comes on that I like, t- you know, shake it. Oh, and oh I'm yeah, like, yeah. damn, this is like a perfect pop song. Yeah, it really is. And, and, if it, you, and if you don't like her, just listen to Ryan Adams, 1989. Because um, he takes every one of those songs right, right, yeah. and crushes it because yeah, it's a yeah. great song. Yeah, yeah she wrote happened. great songs. Sad there's some, for, I, I, yeah, there's a great. Some Dude, footage of her it. just playing a guitar, singing five or six songs right. by herself. Yeah. And her guitar playing is rudimentary, but it doesn't matter because the songs are great. And they're <laughs> her. Yeah. And she doesn't have the best quote. I'm making the rabbit ears right now. She doesn't have the best voice in terms of pitch and I tunefulness, it. but it doesn't matter. Her voice is cool. Yeah. And, um, and she she's got songs. attitude. She writes great songs. Yeah. So yeah, she's, she's yours. mine was uh, I I thought of it for some because we mentioned System of a Down and <laughs> in the early to mid nineties I thought Rage Against the Machine was the stupidest fucking band <laughs> on earth. I thought it was like lame, half-assed, rehash Zeppelin riffs with some bad rapper doing the same rap <laughs> oh over every God. song. Wow. Yeah, no, I was just wow. like I didn't I, love I didn't the, move me at all. Didn't get it, huh? And then we played <laughs> Pink Pop in 1996 on the main stage oh, in the middle of the dude. day, and we were on, and they were on right after us. And like by the end of the second bar, eighty thousand people were <sighs> mashing so their heads, and I was like. Oh my God. And since then, I fucking love them and I mm-hmm. listen to them all the time. Yep. And I think they're it's a completely fascinating thing. It shouldn't work at all. It's and it so works so well. Perfect. The so, timbre of his voice and the sound of the band. And I fucking love um, <laughs> the rhythm it section. It's Why so it good. <laughs> Why shouldn't it work? Uh, what's his name? Drummer uh, Celine Vigil's ex husband. Uh, totally. What's his Brad, name? Brad, what's Will? his name? Yeah, yeah. I what's wrong with him? In... Nothing. I'm saying he's awesome. Oh, okay. So why shouldn't it work? Pardon? Why shouldn't it work? I, it shouldn't work because it's his. I described it. It's like. Bad Zeppelin cop- <laughs> riff rip offs with its little, little uh, dude doing the same <laughs> rap over every song. But there's something about it. Because, like, Audio Slave it's came so out, and Audio Slave should have been better than Rage Against the Machine because it's like the cool band with the great singer, songwriter. It's going to be amazing. And for me, it was boring. Yeah. Whereas just Rage Against the Machine, the sound, the timbre of his voice and his attitude. When he's spitting out the so lyrics good. over their group, it's just like magic. Yeah. It's yes. just like instant. I don't know why I didn't. He- I didn't hear it until like two bars into that first song when they came on after us. I was on the side of the stage. I was like, "Holy shit, this is good!" Yeah. And since then, yeah, Brad Welk and Cumberford, what's his name, the bassist, what they yeah. lay down is just. It's in. It's in. It's in the. That's it's at, it's at the level of Alex Van Halen and, and Michael Anthony, where it's Ooh. so easy yeah. to underappreciate. Where it's so good. So good. Well, so and, good. I mean, and the guitar player, I mean, nobody does that. No, you know, that's completely his he, own approach. Love but, it or hate it, he's got his... I, and I love his but, g- guitar geeking out. 
He's used the same guitar, the same amp, and the same say. like four effects yeah, for thirty five years, which I and thought mm -hmm. is super cool. And, and all, and you can definitely tell it's him. Yes, which is that's you know, what like, I was about to say. Well, that's the main thing. Dude, he is. In, no one realizes how good he is at guitar because he does all these like showboaty effect, like but, yeah, Digitech but, stuff. But, but when he plays like a chord, it oh, sounds no, he's so great. good. Like yeah. no, when he's, he just, and the, he's paying like, attention. He, it's so good. And the what, what's the the audio slave? Those hits are amazing. They are good. Like they are good. Toned down, sound garden, whatever. They're no, fucking they are tear good. jerking. No, they're like, good stuff. The, the highway one, whatever. The, yeah, like great a songs. They like, are great songs. I didn't mean to undersell those songs. It's just no, that I there's it. something. Well, no, I mean, yeah, yeah, in the, in the, you're yeah, actually right. right. There's, there's something sun, magical. Spiels, there's yeah. something magical about the four of them with Zach De La Rocha doing his thing. Yeah, and I've heard sure, that people who sure. saw them at some of their first like house parties in L.A. like it was there from the start. Like yeah. they just yeah. came on stage and it was just a juggernaut. Ty was telling me like because they'd done a tour with them in Europe or whatever, and they came back and they played rock candy. He's like, he's calling everybody new, right? Unfortunately, that wasn't me. Right. But I, yeah. I've never seen it. And now, oh they, now they want like $400. That's still the to... only time I've seen them. And they were, you know, it was in front of 80,000 drunk Dutch people. And it was just <laughs> so killing. I've got a worse, I've got a worse version of yeah, that. Yeah, we need your, which, yeah. which your... And I didn't, I couldn't think of one until you said yours. I'm like, oh, okay, well then I have to say. So we played Download mm -hmm. on, yeah. the, on the, on a side stage. Yeah. And, uh. Well, two. Corn. Yeah. Corn <laughs> was like, I, we did a bunch of shows with them and watching them do like the whole one of the sides of the wall. Mm hmm. Wow. Was phenomenal. That's pretty ballsy. Yeah. And it, and it was like, like I was never a corn guy. Yeah. No. Um, Actually, yeah. I was. But the one that like really. Mm hmm. Minus the vocalist. Mm hmm. Limp Biscuit. <laughs> wow. Dude. Dude. Wow. How brave. Dude. How brave are Dude. you? They're what? such a good well, band. What's his Minus name? Wes Borland. West West Borland. He is a monster. And he's a fucking whittled his own guitar once. That like, guy, he make that thing for his. That guy's a superhero. He's a fucking like, yeah. I was Genius. on stage. We love you, And buddy. that guy's like, his back starts out here, and his waist <laughs> oh, is like, like this a big. huge guy. He just, just well, like he, was paint, he was painted black and white, oh. and I don't think he had a shirt on. He might not have pants on. I don't care. I was humping his leg as soon as his leg went back. I'm like, dude, that was so weird. He's like, hey, what's your name? Oh, I'm Jeff. I was, I was like, he was fucking in the band, like the drum, like the, with that, you know, I don't give two shits about me. Right. About they were so, he, they yeah. were so, and the whole fucking place is right. like yeah. going crazy. I'm like, and I brought that up with the fellas in the band. They're like, <laughs> they're like not having it. I'm like, you can't even, minus the fat kid. <laughs> You can't even yeah. give me that. Minus like, Fred Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that doesn't surprise me because if you even the recordings, which you could cheat your way through, making sound good, have that. And I always thought that Can that West Portland going? guy How's seemed to know what he was doing. The Limp Biscuit things. That it, hits home. It was the. It was like I hate Limp Biscuit. Yeah, no, I, I did know, it like, all for the Nookie too. But yeah, I, was really, I mean, it's like what a horrible song. Yeah, and yeah. what a horrible guy. Every quote you ever read from him is yeah. just like, could you be any douchier? Like, yeah. but the, man, and the answer is no. No, he can't. Yeah. more douchey. Yeah, uh, but that band can play. Yeah, they were so good. and and like they're not just hits because he says stupid stuff over them. <coughs> right, they're yeah. hits because that band writes good songs. No, I think that's. I mean, we we were talking about this right when we started. The Cream does. Yeah. Most people who get traction are good. Yeah, it's not. I mean, eventually, the good stuff does kind of. Yeah, and sometimes even things that you don't think are good, then you see it and you're like, yeah. "Oh, I get it." To I be actually clear, know what they're doing. Yeah. Maybe it's not my thing, but to be clear, Fred Durst is a douche. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is in no way propping up Fred Durst. I guess I wonder if he'll he probably want to be on the show now if he yeah, hears that and want to come in. Welcome. You know, get a hold of ask Keith Nelson. Oh, is he religious now? I don't know, maybe, but he'll want to yeah, be. Yeah, ask Keith. We'll have to go through Keith. Yeah, first. he can if he wants to yeah. get on. If Keith wants to come on with him, if Keith, indicate yeah. himself. If Keith says it's okay. Which team, Keith? Because he calls the shots for all those guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, locks on the other side. That's too bad. <laughs> So do you guys cut this? Do you just run it? Do no. you? He edits the shit out of it. Yeah, well, I I try not to edit the 
episodes as much as I can, but I do. Yeah. Um, a lot of I wonder, coughs. you know, I, my, I listen to almost every, I think Bob Lefsitz is the best interviewer out there right now. Do you, do you, I don't know, do you get his newsletter or listen to his podcast? So the Lefsitz letter is this industry newsletter that he started in the paper letter era in the 90s. And it's an email. You should go Bob Lefsitz. And then he does podcasts. He interviews mostly music business people. Oh, but cool. Some, you know, like he has Chris Blackwell from Island this week oh, uh, yeah. he's good to listen to for he, he asks all the questions you wish interviewers to ask like so what were you like in, you know were you as a kid were you popular what did your parents do where did you grow up yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you stopped working today would you uh, you know are you rich are you poor would you can you know do you have to work are you on tour because you have to work or are you on tour because you like to play you Damn. know like Wow. All from that one song. Is that enough to let you know? Yeah. He's worth listening to. <laughs> that's cool. That yeah. sounds awesome. But I always wonder when I, that's the podcast I listen to most often, just how edited most of them are. Yeah. A lot of them aren't very edited. No, that's my experience. That's the best. Uh, yeah. We'll edit out the part where my. I quit my job. You did? Yeah. Because you were unhappy? Uh, it was just time to do something different. I've had five or six careers and I was doing the digital music thing for 15 years and oh, I was yeah, at Amazon wow. for almost 10 years and it was just hmm. you at yeah. Amazon? Yeah. Oh, I worked cool. I was on the music team, yeah. Amazon Music and then I was on the Echo Alexa team. Uh, yeah. So and did did that end up well for you? Yeah, I mean it was I was when I left it was time to leave. I mean the average tenure at Amazon for a two corporate years. job is 1 year <laughs> as opposed year. to all the <laughs> other tech companies where it's 2 years. So uh, and I lasted in almost yeah, nine and a half Damn. years, which is feels yeah. like it was You're a pretty a good run. And I'm also like a great grandfather there, you know. <laughs> right. You were born so in, the, old. in the in the late 1900s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, that, I mean that's definitely a, it definitely being a 50 something digital media executive is not really it's like okay did that uh, can you uh, not show up to the meeting <laughs> yeah exactly. how do you need to turn your mic off or your, well unfortunately i had the rock star you know i that that was the, the trade off i yeah. had the cache of, yeah. of the you know being a rock and roll dude yeah so but a lot of people didn't even know yeah they so know. i didn't he's, i'm not gonna walk in you know with a like tattooed on my forehead <laughs> it was like a patch I, it's, it's, I mean i had one meeting so i was on the echo alexa team and the guy who runs the whole that whole part of the company is just super great guy dave limp very very smart and uh pretty cool dude and I, I managed relationships with music and audio radio services that were on Echo Alexa devices. So I'd set up a meeting between this guy, Dave Limp, and, and the CEO of Sirius XM. Um, and it was the two of them at the like CEO level and me just in there to introduce them and get to start the meeting. And they're like, and then they come in and they're like, oh, Dave's like, oh, I love Howard. Stern's amazing. Oh, and they're like, blah, blah, oh, yeah, Howard, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I was on Stern once. And they both look at me like I'm from fucking <laughs> Pluto. <laughs> not like, even Mars. What? No, no, like, <laughs> way, maybe not even a planet. You know, like, <laughs> what? I'm like, yeah, I was on for like two and a half, three hours. It's my band. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, I'm just a dorky grandpa at Amazon. Technology. Tech. Well, that's been the hardest part for us. We don't. I don't. I'm kind of an analog guy. Like. A yeah, I have. I you know started to. I always had a home recording setup since high school, and then yeah. for 20, 25 years, and then I started to go more digital in the mid 2000s, and I just lost interest. Because I used to have a decent. I had some decent compressor and mic preamps yeah, and. Yeah. I had a yeah. half of a rack about cool. board yeah, You don't need much, right? Then I would use something like this or, <coughs> you know, something simple. And um, I just lost interest because I don't like working on the laptop. Man, I've I've been leaning into it because so I've always been a side guy. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like, you know, for me, it was just like I heard... I was at a Christian camp, mm -hmm. and I lost a three-legged race. I was always this big Viking kid, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm supposed to play sports, but I hate right. them. Well, okay, well, there you go. <coughs> you know, I've never been around this many kids in my life right. than at this camp, so it was like being embarrassed by... Right. I found out there was more kids than me, and I got fucking humbled. And I walk into my cabin, and the counselor had a... a a strap pack, you know, one of those shitty. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and he would just sit in the corner and he goes dun 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 dun. He just played the riff 
from Smells Like Teen Spirit, and I'm, I'm not allowed to listen to secular music, right. you know? So I've never, I've heard Weird Al, but I've not heard any, I'm, I'm not allowed to listen to Black Sabbath or Pearl Jam. Like, right. if I listened to the end, my radio would get taken away for like a week. Wow. Yeah, so when, when he did that, I was like, I, it, my mind exploded, and I grabbed his arm, and I was like, I don't care what that was, but that's the only thing I care about. Wow. And like, I got obsessed with guitar. Like, I... I went and told my dad about this experience uh, when was camp. Was he sympathetic or was he? Yeah, because he always wanted to be a musician. And my dad's a very complex human. So, yeah. But not that because he was crazy cheap. Right, right. So he somehow produces from his closet this like shitty Spanish uh-huh. guitar. Uh-huh. And he plays this song. And he goes, uh, when you can... <laughs> Log okay? in? It's fucking smoking here. That's hilarious. Oh, is that good? Little hot box. I can't tell. Oh, yeah. oh no, I just. It, oh yeah, I couldn't tell you there. Like seeing Bad Company in 1977. <laughs> <laughs> right. With the song "Bad Company" oh, by God, the I'll band. I'll never forget Bad them Company. doing that in the encore. You know? <laughs> I, that was the first concert I went to on my own. Was really? Bad Company? Were you a big fan too? I liked Bad Company. I had the Straight Shooter album, which is still one of the better rock albums ever. And I actually think, I would say, kind of the combination of. Boz Burrell and Simon Kirk would be in my top five favorite musicians. The sound of that rhythm section, and he, you know, Boz Burrell played fretless through Damn. all that stuff. Oh, did he? Yeah, know. and there's just a sound to that. And I like Simon Kirk. I mean, those are great, great sounding records. In some ways, they sound better than the Zeppelin records from the same period to me. They're more space. There's more space. Yeah, Simon Kirk's playing has a lot of space but like you you know um can't get enough of your love that groove oh, dude. which i mean it's, it's hard to cover because it's the open tuning on the guitar that's required but that it's totally. just like yeah i loved mm-hmm. bad company mm-hmm. and they but they did that in the encore you know all of a sudden whoa they come out and, and paul rogers is out there at the Rhodes or the Wurlitz or whatever in the middle of the yeah and, uh, yeah that was like your moment with the guy playing you smells like teen spirit the, okay. the boom boom Boom, bad, and they had um, <laughs> white lights flooding the crowd. It was the only time they used them in the show when they hit the course of Bad Company. All of a sudden, the whole yeah. Coliseum slash Key Arena Van slash Halen Climate movement. Pledge Arena was lit up, and I was just like all in. Because you realize at that point they'd been there the whole time, and they yeah. only use them for yeah. right now. <laughs> Pretty cool. Bum, bum. Yeah. yeah, I love them. Very. Yeah. Yeah, really. I forgot to meet Paul Rogers four or five years ago at Amazon Music. It was fun to, you know, geek out and just tell him, like, oh, my God. He's not tall, but his voice (laughs) is he was they were doing it, you know, so people would come by um, Amazon and do like in a blacked out conference room play for the music staff. Right. That new Brandy Carlisle, lots of big people, Bonnie Raid, all sorts of big artists. And yeah, he came through. There was like a Bad Company reissue four or five years ago, and he came, you know, because he lives in Kelowna, BC. His whatever current wife is from there, and she kind of manages him, I think, because he's been around a lot in the last yeah. 20. I've, I've been at that practice space in Ballard and like walked up and like, <laughs> that Paul guy's Rogers. really good at sounding like Paul Rogers. <laughs> right. And he opened the door, I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, yeah, it's Paul like Rogers. Too. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, he. I, well, his sound guy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, anyway, he, he did this thing at, at Amazon where he played in a conference room with the curtains blacked out at lunchtime. <laughs> and he's not a very good guitar player, and he played acoustic guitar. But, oh, my God, he, he, he did feel like that. making love. Uh, yeah. yeah, he just started strumming the one in the four chord, the baby. And I just was like goosebumps on oh my goosebumps my God, over my so whole... His, he just has the, the voice. That yeah. just, it's like Ann Wilson. Totally. Like it doesn't matter where and when you hear doesn't. Ann Wilson sing, it's just going to make your toe... <laughs> She's Shoot better than everyone. Your, oh my god, she's it's better insane. than everyone. It's fucking yeah. crazy. And it she'll is. be wearing like, you know, trainers. Yeah. Like she looks like she came from Pilates. She's the only singer oh. I've heard every time I've heard her with various incarnations of heart, love mongers, just the two of them together at Teatro Zanzani. I have never, I've probably, I guess, heard her sing nine or ten times. Every time, like, you just hear my hair just like shoots up on end. And she was my first crush. She's cute. Dreamboat She's Annie, cute. I think. Oh, yeah. Was, uh, yeah. The little pictures of her and her sister on the KSW poster. Like, oh. each each month there was a picture of a band, oh. and it was just the two of them rocking out. And I was like, 
<laughs> yeah. no, I have heard, there are many people who are a little bit older than we are, Jeff, who were around when they did mostly Zeppelin covers and would play at the Aquarius Tavern and mm-hmm. the rain, old Rainbow, who said that was the best band they've ever seen. Was yeah. Heart yeah. when they were in their Zeppelin cover face, just like dude, mind-blowingly dude, good. They do the rhythm than... section of that band is like, oh Michael DeRozier went to my high school. Oh, he and did? Like, yeah, and it's like, you listen to that, it's like, he is so musical. I don't know why they don't get more props. He's why, so good and Steve Austin's so good. Why don't they? I mean, there must be. I don't want to, you know, yeah. whatever. But it's like they're so good and they're still doing it. Yeah. But they now are. they're doing heart by heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, <laughs> I think that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's like, fuck it. They, they wrote those. Like, no. Those parts, they're not, they didn't write the songs, but like they wrote their parts. You know, yeah. it's like they're like, they're fucking I mean, signature parts. They're signature parts and they're beautifully played and they're great sounds. And yeah. it's, yeah, and Roger Fisher too. I mean, that's yeah, a yeah, mind yeah. and all those guys. Every single one of them. It's the Ziggy Stardust thing. Yeah. The I, band I, I, saw the, the I saw the Paul Rogers at the uh, at the Greek. Oh, and his sound guy for a long time, and I don't know if it's still the case, was the guy who was Brad, who used to work at the Phoenix below in that oh. background. And well, so, and his drummer for a while was that guy. I never remember his name. Huge guy from around here, rocker guy, maybe five years older than me, long hair, like enormous dude. What the fuck was his name? He used to come here subset with when we played with Sir Mix a lot. Uh, I can't remember <laughs> was, that guy's yeah. name. You did Subset? Subset was the three of us and Sir mix lot and this guy's rapper, Out of Sight, who was part of Mix's posse and honestly should have been huge. It <laughs> just, I, I had, you, I missed, you, I had the, you predated the rap rock thing by just like... Of, like we years. were right in there with it, and, and it just didn't work out with having... Um, it just didn't come together business-wise. But, you know, the... The show, the shows we played because we did, did we Anifest? made basically. I don't oh, think we did. Hall Ball, maybe? No, we did a bunch of shows and we did a little tour down the West Coast. We played the Phoenix Underground a couple of times. We played the Crocodile, um, and um, it was. There's an album worth of material out there that we were talking about releasing as an NFT in the last six months, and I, and it was I think it was concurrent with Napster ninety nine two thousand, and I think it did so, yeah, get downloaded right a lot on Napster, um, but you know there were you there were shows with the presidents that were kind of crazy fun, like when we were blowing up locally and we'd play the crocodile and there'd be 600 people inside and 1,000 totally. people outside. But I And I have never, being on stage with mix a lot and doing these shows, they were the craziest. He's a master <laughs> entertainer. Is he? he is the best performer I've ever been on stage with, for sure, and one of the best wow. I've ever seen. Oh, no, he can just take the audience and just, like, wow. make them do anything. Yeah, there were, I have never been, played shows where it's like, people just taking their clothes off and going insane i mean it's just, it was a it was a great thing and unfortunately it it, it didn't really finally come together yeah that yeah, was fun a bummer. super smart guy you should have mix a lot on here i don't yeah, know yeah we should, could you should. That for us? Uh, i might be able to i could certainly yeah. reach out to him i'd love that super super love. smart guy yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting he grew up and he's around where i grew up yeah too. and i've seen him at the grocery store yeah he's out there on his little 10, 15 acres on the Auburn Black Diamond Road. That's where his studio was, where we used to record that that record. Yeah, he'd be good to have on. I don't know if he was churchified as a young person or not. Yeah, I, I mean, know. it's weird with everyone's experience with religion. Yeah. It seemed to just bounce off you like rain axe, though. It was I like, know. you just... Uh, I, 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 think that, I think that's a good thing. No, I guess so. Thing. I mean, I have I've always been interested in, obviously, we've, uh, per our dis- the conversation we just had, I'm always interested in these kind of transcendent experiences yeah. through whatever means. Or playing music is, is that same urge. But yeah, I don't know what it was with organized religion at that, as a young age. It just, just didn't, didn't stick. It didn't make sense to me. I, it seemed... Do you think it was... Do you think that's what it was? Is like there was, It didn't get... You could already think for yourself before it had a chance to get in? I think that, yeah. I don't think I was... I don't know if I could have been... Whether through family culture or other influences, I was not going... I was naturally skeptical, right? And I was not going to be blindly indoctrinated into anything. And I don't know why I was like that. But And so it's your dad ahead. was not necessarily the, the My dad one? was not... My mom... It was really for my mom. It was more like a family cultural thing. She just grew up in sort of parish life and went to... So you should thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, because your dad would have been. Yeah, my dad grew up here. I, as I mentioned when I showed up, like uh, three blocks from here, and then ten blocks from here on Queen Anne. And his, some, you know, his family was somewhat religious, but it wasn't uh, an that, essential. Thing. That's the thing, and it didn't stick with him for sure. He wouldn't have been going to church if he hadn't been married to my mom, and he didn't go to church after. They <laughs> so I, I think that's really important. I think the the man in your life, the male, you Maybe, know, the patriarch yeah. in your life, is the person who if. Like, that's why I'm like, I didn't understand. Like, well, fuck, I got to pay attention because that guy's paying attention. Mm, right. Oh, and I can see that. In, so yeah, like, and then my stepdad's not, uh, I mean, he's not a not religious guy. person at all. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's not his thing. I think thing. you got real lucky. But also, it I could mean, be that, you know, you're I don't just know. too smart for those guys. To <laughs> yeah. <make you> like <laughs> that. I don't know. I don't know. I, I couldn't really say. I just didn't feel like a good use of my time, I guess, when I was in, like, fourth grade or whatever. I was like, I think I remember my rationale. was like, they teach us the same thing every year, and I, I don't really know. I heard you. <laughs> yeah, I heard you. I get it. I understand what we're learning, but I don't need to learn it every year forever. And it's not yeah. that yeah. meaningful. Yeah. 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 So oh, what, and and to, uh, to her credit, my mom was like, okay, you know, if that's she, I had sort of a rationale. I had a thought out rationale for why I didn't want to do it. And that was, right. she honored that, respected it. But you already had had your first communion. So you're sort of like safe I on was, both I must be, yeah. First communion was probably right in there at the same time. I uh, I don't know. So your soul is safe and Ed's soul is safe. Ed's fine. Yeah, yeah. Ed's going to be just fine. And I, and my had, soul is I safe. had communion, but it wasn't my, you know, like I had a first communion, but it wasn't like I was never confirmed. I didn't get confirmed. That's a little bit later, I think, usually. More like high school age. Isn't that the same? What is confirmed? Uh, I, I don't think you, so. I thought you're not supposed to have your first communion until you're confirmed. I, I, who knows? Clearly, we are highly <laughs> lax <laughs> Catholics. <laughs> yeah. Confirm, confirmation is like, it's around high school. No, yeah. So yeah. It can't be your first communion. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. You just have to know. You have to be able to say. Yeah. Oh. You have to be able to do the catechism. Or you, yeah. the, I think there are certain. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But, but confirmation is like, I will put butts in seats and I will give you 10%. Oh, yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to like, you, I don't know if there's a contract or is it just a, a verbal contract with well, you and your, that's your, an, and the Almighty. I mean, obviously, that's the interesting part of organized religion is the. Oh, yeah. The, the, the rack. Rack. Oh, yeah. I think about it a lot with the oh, LDS shit, yeah. church, just because the tithing is, I can't remember what they're supposed to tithe in, in Dude, if LDS. you're going to choose a church, that's the one. I, that's community, everybody gives the money. They're the nicest yeah. people. You know, and yeah. like, why, and maybe not the best story, but it's still, you know, but, but as, as they got, they got it right, though. Like, they're like, we stick with our own, make really beautiful people. I just watched a documentary on Netflix that... It's not doesn't really flatter. Hey, that. This is what you're saying, but yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. They, they so, really, hey, we didn't recognize that black people weren't animals until <laughs> 1978. <laughs> but otherwise, we're great. Otherwise, you know, solid. Yeah, otherwise, you know, solid. Yeah, yeah, 75 wives, you know. Things yeah. like this. There's some abuses of religion. That's well, the, 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 critical thinking is important, and it's not really allowed in a lot of these circles. Yeah. It's really... I got baptized in a river out back behind my house. Which river? The cedar. Green cedar. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I grew up on that actually. Nice. It was in my backyard. Um, sweet. It was sweet because I could I could work construction. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't go to high school. I just worked construction, mm -hmm. and then I'd be all sleepy. Uh, but I wanted to like play guitar and like mm -hmm. or go out with my church friends. You know, go read the Bible. Church raids. <laughs> so you get home from work, you'd be exhausted. Like you know, it's all hot out. Jump in the river. Just walk up the river, jump yeah. in, float down for a little bit. It's so cold. Oh, I like that. By the time you get out, you're like, I'm ready to party. Party with God. Party, party with the Bible. Oh yeah. There, actually, the community part is really cool. And like, yeah. my family grew up in this. It's best described. Like, have you seen that movie Fight Club? Yeah. That's kind of like the house we grew up in. Yeah. It was like it rained inside, it was falling down, and we were building it all ourselves. So, right. like, we poured the foundation. We, yeah. It was horrible. And a lot of these people from the church would come over and help. Yeah. And when we didn't have enough money, they'd fill up, yeah. you know, the fridge. But at the same time, you have to agree with and partake in and speak the way they speak about things. You have to view the Bible the way they view the Bible. Right. And if you ask too many questions, you get in trouble. Then, you're, then you don't get the 
your roof fixed. I got or the, or the full fridge. Or the full yeah, fridge. In fact, I think it was when I got in that bigger band because they were a non Christian band, the whole church got together and prayed that we would fail. <laughs> That's wow. what happened. <laughs> Praying for failure is really not. That's kind of like you know cheering when the other team makes a mistake. That's yeah, kind of kind of bush league. It is bush league. Praying for anybody's failure is that, that's a, that's the that, that, that's definitely that's over the, the line for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's a bummer. And you know, uh, <laughs> I think spirituality, like you know, if this, but. But might, might make might, might make a great T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Pray for failure. <laughs> Pray for failure. TM. Yeah. We got a bunch of we got a bunch of merch ideas <laughs> from this show. Yeah. Pray That's for a good failure. one. Pray, oh, yeah. pray for failures are good. There's Jesus bongs coming. There's a yeah. lot. Oh, there's the, a uh, lot of merch the, coming. Um, down the, line. Uh, the, uh, the wine of the wrath for fornication. That one. That <laughs> one <laughs> the wine of the wrath for fornication. <laughs> like but also, what was the original one? The um, the, uh, the uh, oh, spoils of uh, spoils the spoils of Babylon. Spoils of the of the of Babylon. It's like yeah, sp- yeah. The, what's the whole one? <laughs> um, I can't something, remember something that spoils a Babylon. I can't remember that. Enjoying the, you know, like, well, cause I, immersed in the spoils of Babylon. Immersed in the spoils of Babylon. It's, it's in the Bible. We'll find it. It's, the, it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There you go. These Pray three for failure. Taken away from uh, the Babylonian, con- you know, they get conquered, so they get taken mm-hmm. off to Babylon. And uh, they don't partake in any of the shit that like eat sac- meat sacrifice to idols they, they they stay true to Yahweh and then when they get thrown into a furnace they don't burn up oh, it's pretty dope it's pretty cool man yeah yeah just come out yeah, once you realize you're not going to be <laughs> slightly <able>. sooty <laughs> right. no, of course there's, there's of course an they're angel naked. in there too of course they're naked when they come out because they're clothes I think so their clothes nice. were uncinged no, actually no no, no, no it's been no, like no, a no. long time since I've heard this story so. that, can, can, you can't you can't bless. Us. You can't de- deify clothes. Should we look clothes. it up? Anyway. No, you know, no, we lost. We lost these two cameras, so we should, maybe we should. Maybe we we should lost them. Yeah. When did they stop? When, I don't know when they stopped. That one. Uh, I'm kind of. I'm kind of yeah. on that one. Yeah. Hi, camera. Wherever. Yeah. yeah. Let's. We can wrap it up. We can yeah. say goodbye. Yeah. Well, we got on Yeah. There'll just be a picture of Dave on the front after. <laughs> <laughs> Dave TV. Uh, well, Dave, thanks for, uh, yeah, thanks talking for coming. Here. That was great. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank that was you. a really fun conversation. It. It's the it's first fun to hang live. Out. Oh no, we well, it'll be the first live get high and read the Bible that we've aired. I think I might have gotten a little high just being in the room. I, I usually smoke about seven times this too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. That's why I'm like, yeah. I could feel. I just saw <laughs> coming in here seven, eight, seven, eight minutes ago. I just went. Well, if you notice, I, I brought four. Oh, I'm good. See, so I've yeah. been taking my five milligrams of. Uh, I like uh, Mister. I could. I can. Uh, Where's that camera that we're on? Uh, uh, right yeah, I, Mr. Moxie's Mints. I enjoy the five milligram <laughs> THC cinnamon. You know what else you like? If you want to send me 20 gross of those, just to, I'll give you my shipping address. You, you know what else you like if you haven't tried them? Is the Pioneer Squares. Yeah? Yeah. Pioneer Squares. Yeah, they're little gels. Oh, okay. I got these, uh, I've got about 1,000 milligrams of gummies right there. I was going to eat five of them and go for it, but... We're, we're opening the doors. We're, we're going to the let there be light. <laughs> Goodbye, people. Let there be light. Let there be oxygen. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. This is Let's a great spot. Off. 